Last time, after having defended the winery, the Wizard of Wine's winery for the uh, Were Ravens, the keepers of the feather, uh, the party decided that really the root of the problem, as it were, needed to be taken care of. The source of these blights. Uh, they were informed that rituals were taking place at a hill to the south, Yester Hill, as it's known. Uh, after, before departing, they met a new party member as well, who had most, who had very recently come through the mists. Athelflaed, the ranger, having found herself lost in the woods, in the mists, and seeing a bizarre f vision being constructed into a giant golem. And of course, the vision of Strahd von Sarovich himself. A similar dream to that that the rest of the party had woken from. At least there are some tangents that rung true to the party. Together, they went to the hill and found a ritual being cast in a in the middle of some standing stones atop the hill. A 50-foot statue in the visage of Sarovich himself was there with a glowing green light inside. The druids began chanting and berserkers inside defended them and Strahd himself atop a flying horse with a mane of fire visited, mostly just watching playing a bit with the party, seeing what they would do. The party nearly stopped the ritual, but the last druid was able to complete the final words, which brought this enormous creature to life. It wrapped vines around the party. It slammed them with its trunks, but they were able to defeat it, if just barely, and, uh, with a few close calls, but they overcame and the tree collapsed. Now, a giant tree bark-like statue lays at the ground. Lightning still is crashing around you on these stones. And um, this fallen enormous statue lies there, green light pulsating from the middle. Saurive looks around nervously at the striking lightning and the weather, begins his own incantation, casting some spells and says, mm, think I need to take care of this. Mm, we'll be here for a bit. Mm, need to pray, fix the weather. <laughs> and Harry, we will get to you in a little bit. I'll get bring you in and Shortly. A rush man. Oh. I'm gonna sort of push myself free of You're quiet, Elena. Oh, shoot. How about now? Bit better. There you go. Better? Better? Best. Mm. Okay, great. Um, I've okay. got this strange pain everywhere. Um, it's really not that strange, I suppose. I think I was hit by lightning? Yes. It hurts. I don't recommend it. It was quite fantastic. I'll um, help him up and give him uh, some hit points here. Take take ten. With uh, lay on hands. Am I still flying? Yes. We, oh, because, okay. We retconned that then. So. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, if he's still flying, then. No, I, I, I will have come down. Okay, yeah, get, get over here, and I'll... Ten hit points. Um, Go clear. Yeah. Um, and I'll give myself ten as well. That was rough. Um, and pick, like, a little, like, uh, thing of wood sort of out from a chink in my armor. Um, I Nice Ethel flat, although maybe... Keep me out of that next time. Yeah, I'll, <laughs> I'll do better. It's all right. So, uh, yeah, obviously, this particular threat seems to have been dealt with, but I really don't like the look of that tree over there. Well, there's the tree. 
which I'm in agreement that needs to be burnt out all the way through. But we should get those stones out as well. The green ones I'll point over to the tree and. No, no, that's. Yeah, so they, it's. I may have been a, or not the a tree, little bit the confusing statue, in my description, but yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, the statue. Getting my words crossed here. Um. I mean, Alimus, do you have any fire left? I do. Okay. I mean, to be honest, I'm amazed that that tree actually, they let it grow this. I mean, it's obviously very bad. <laughs> Why would anybody let it get that big? Some people use evil. Oh, that's yeah. a good point. Never mind. Yeah. All right. Um, well, I'm going to try to hack these gems out of the statue if I can. Um, and Alimus, if you are interested in spending a little bit more of that fire. There's a nice, hefty tree for you to burn down. My pleasure. There might be some more of those blights. I'll go with you, Elimus. Yeah. I'll just walk up to the tree. And so it is it. a it's a, a little ways off from where you are. It's probably about 100 feet, actually, from this precipice where the uh, um, ritual was taking place. Um, Aren't we talking about the tree we just killed? Oh, sorry. I that's what I like. Are you talking about the sort of statue con the, the construct that they just created or I so thought that's what it, we were it, fighting. No, there is a larger tree with black gnarled wood, sort of like what you see in this uh, um yeah, in the, the, picture. the picture we have up here. Okay. Um and in another area in sort of a the stone circle was um basically what was a giant statue of Strahd that was being constructed and worshipped here. Oh, okay. That came alive. The statue has been felled. The tree is enormous. Like a like a ancient oak. Wasn't there something, some sort of connection between that stuff he had and this tree? It was I suppose from... you have now, Elimus. It's the same word, yes. I'm going to go and study the tree. I'm going to start casting, um, one second, before I do. Ah. Ah. We have our cleric joining Yay. us now. Hello. So we'll get her all activated. It, while we do this, um, it is actually at this time, if we just pause, when you start to walk towards the tree, um... You, your passive perception sees something out of the corner of your eye. Harry. Hi there. After a terrible week, you sit in front of the fire that you have set. Ashes dancing past your hair, blowing it lightly. The heat washing over you, like the shame inside, burning. You sigh, and you remember the voice, the voice saying, you could bring her back. You just need to say yes and follow the instructions. And almost under your breath, just remembering the conversations again, you say, yes. And thunder strikes around you. The wind picks up and b pulls the ashes from the fire around you, blinding you for a moment. You scratch at your eyes, just trying to get them open but just it hurts to close them but it hurts worse to have the actual eyelids open and for a while you're just clawing at your face trying to get your bearings and as you open them you see nothing you're in a forest but there's no path the path you came down is gone you are surrounded by mist fog dense and then in one direction, you see a red flashing. This must be the fire. This must be the pyre. Thought. 
just maybe one just one more moment near it you just need that one more moment and you stumble towards it you go and you go it seems just a bit out of reach getting further away from you it doesn't make any sense but the mists part for you your path is clear the direction you must go is clear and suddenly it's like you hit a wall and your what you are experiencing changes on a dime you stumble forward ahead of you an enormous hill with a ring of stones lightning crackling around them and the largest tree you've ever seen black of wood nothing growing from it though hung from it desiccated bodies a place of obvious desecration you think you want to turn around for a moment but then you see a robed figure a red robe walking from between the stones his eyes dart in your direction harry would you care to tell us what elimus sees down the hill having just emerged from the tree line sure um harrison is a clean-cut nobleman and there's no doubt in that he's clean shaven and his haircut is um very short and very close cropped and he's wearing polished half plate but he carries himself with a haunch despite what looks to be a good posture you can see almost um personified as a sense of shame that hangs over him and as he meets your eyes oh well, if he is looking your way you'll see this dark rings beneath them what once was maybe a handsome face is now laden with dark emotions and he'll narrow his eyes at you we're casting his eyes back to the tree. Am I within shouting range of Alimus? Yes, it's far, but yes, you could. You he would be able to hear you. If you would raise your voice. Okay. I'll uh, I'll call out to him. I'll say, Hark, fiend! Are you responsible for this dark magic? What is this place? This cursed land? The rest of you hear this fair voice sort of ringing out across the air. A very um, though laden with its own emotion, it is it's not any not like anyone you've heard speak in Barovia to up to this point. So. I look down, look to the others. I don't think the fight's over yet. I'm going to run over towards Elimus so that I can better see what's going on and draw an arrow back. I'll also join him with my eyes on Harrison. So aside from the red-robed wizard, sorry, go ahead, Harry. Draw my longsword as I see allies approach, and I'll say, what's this then, vagabonds? Come to claim a desperate man's last coin, no doubt. All you'll get from me is cold steel. Boy, have I heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> and I will saunter over and sort of fold my arms and stand on the other side of Elimus. Assuming the rest of the party sort of comes yeah. into view away from this ritual circle, then um, if you would like to describe for Harry the group that he sees in front of him. If you, Jade, if you would like yeah. to start. Okay, Alimus uh, is young, early, uh, sorry, late teens, maybe 18, 19. Scrawny, human, black hair, a bit of bum fluff being around, around his face. Um, Carrying a very crooked black staff. His uh, red robes, you can smell like rose petals, uh, dung, just really potent components. Rose petals and dung. Yeah. Well, a bit of everything, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's like you're not quite, quite sure what, but you can smell, you know, what's that spice? Is that. Opery of life. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that, yeah, that's basically what he looks like. He's got his hood over, so you can sort of see his eyes. <clears throat> and we can go down the row here on Some the left. Foul how about, it, no doubt. How about Maris? Uh, Maris is a half-elf cleric. She wears leather armor and has like a little bit of flowing action in terms of like a skirt over the pants she wants to feel pretty um and 
She is of roughly average height, uh, has dark hair, light brownish eyes, and is athletic. Um, but she looks friendly. <laughs> hmm. It's been a week, so she's ninth level now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually 12th level, um, I didn't want to bring it up, but... <laughs> <laughs> and yet we still almost all died. Mm. And uh, how about Jaswaldo? Ah, Jaswaldo is tall, he is very handsome. Uh, he's got a, a scruff on his face, like he's not really keeping up with his shaving. However, a very, very long and well-maintained waxed mustache. Uh, dark tan skin, long hair, uh, the two of his on the, the hair on the side of his face is uh, in um, tight uh, dueler's braids he's uh, wearing a, sort of a Spanish Renaissance sort of outfit a little bit of a breastplate large uh, shoulder pauldron with a very elaborate um, buckler that actually has blades sticking out of it one's pointing straight straight out at a right angle and then others sticking up around and um, a uh, a gauntlet that is actually fixed into the shield that he actually has part of his hand in, wearing a rapier, large um, uh, riding boots, and a very elaborate French musketeer hat mm -hmm. with a long feather. Just think yeah, Princess, um, Princess Bride, Harry. Princess Bride. <laughs> okay, I was thinking Charles II. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff, yeah. yeah. But, That's yeah. closer, actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> very cool. <laughs> All right, how about Claire? Um, so I've got, um, reddish hair, um, flows down past my shoulders, very dark, um, intense looking eyes, um, wear heavy armor, uh, dark, dark metal with blue, um, and she carries both a, a dark long sword and a shield, um, emblazoned with a pair of eyes and seven stars set around it. Um, and heavy scarring coming up from out of the neck of her armor into the side of her face. At least I can be forgiven for thinking you guys are evil. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Athelflaed. Uh, Athelflaed is, I guess, an average height around 5'3", five, 5'4", five, a half-elf, uh, leaning very heavily on wood elf for uh, visible features. She has intense red hair pulled back out of her way. She has a very pale green skin, like not quite green, almost sickly looking if it was on an actual human. Her eyes are this very powerful dark green with gold flecks that catch the light. And in the dark, they sometimes show up. And then she has these very long, intricate tattoos that start on the back of her hand and then wind around her arms, meeting along the middle of her back. And she has a, you know, she's an archer. So she has tattoos that reflect that battle preference. Yes. All right. So you are now face to face. I've got my sword drawn and pointed at this party. Of no doubt evildoers. He looks like well, not my quest. I shan't let this misjustice stand. What have you done to these poor folk? Murdered the lot of them. What? <laughs> <laughs> what have we done? Uh, poor well, folk. Right. I think since we've all been through something similar, I think we might be able to give this fellow a little benefit of the doubt. If he apologizes, we won't kill him. Uh, <laughs> that seems reasonable to me. I agree. I agree with the Ponzi hat man. Um, that is not the Ponce. <laughs> Keep it up. See what happens. What, what wrong do you think we've done? I'm yelling down the hill. And I'll just like tip my sword up to notion to the tree and all the hanging bodies. I assume these folk didn't do this to themselves. What? Well, look at them a little closer and you will see that they have been dead for quite some time. Do you think that we put them all up there and then, I don't know, cooked them? so that they would be all dried and, ooh, look, that one's actually about to, and I hit the tree, <laughs> and one of them just sort of <laughs> falls down bits and pieces okay. of bone and, <laughs> and Seeing cook. the logic in this, but not wanting to admit defeat so soon. You may have, this may be an effort that's been long withstanding. I don't know the first time you hung a buddy from this tree. Maybe you've been at this for years. 
Maybe. Oh, maybe, maybe. Is it, a, is it a practice of yours when you go someplace you've never been before and you see a group of people in a situation, you automatically pass judgment with no, wait a minute, that's what I do. Yeah, just well to... <clears throat> you claim that's that pretty... you're not responsible for this, this travesty. Well, not for that, I'll point up to the tree. We did just kill all the people who put them up there, so I don't know how that makes you feel. Very well. Consider yourself spared. Thank you very much. No, um, well, sheep, I feel sword. the waves of generosity flowing <laughs> over me. <laughs> now, um, I found myself in rather a pickle. I, I must have got all turned around, and I'm fairly sure that Bowler's Gate isn't more than ten miles from here. Ah. Well, yes, it's it's just right back through those <laughs> trees. You can't miss it. I uh, just want to, don't be an ass. No, right. turn to leave. What's your name? It's Harrison. Harrison, wonderful. Um, you're not going to get back out the way you came. Um, God, I feel like we have this conversation like every other day here in Barovia. Um, <laughs> you're not getting out. You're stuck here. Uh, this is a happy little land where no one gets to leave, and everything is just wonderful. You're really selling it, Claire. Great job. I know. <laughs> See, I could have been a salesman in another life. Uh -huh. Okay, he'll uh, sort of take a bit of pensive moments to look down and then look back up after a few seconds. Uh, of course, I should have known this foul magic attached to every deal. You know, for the first few days that I was here, I thought I was dreaming, and I think ultimately it helped. So if you want to think of it as that, it'll probably make things a little smoother, at least at first. Suggesting I throw myself on my sword and awaken from this nightmare? No, oh, no, no. Bad, no. bad, bad, bad. Do plan. what you need to do, that's fine. I mean, that's I didn't. My sword. No. <laughs> um, okay, it's a, um, I'll admit you all have me at some disadvantage. You see more comfortable in this foul land than I. If you will ignore my prior transgressions against you, I would be most joyous to join you until at least I can find my way back to Baldur's Gate. Maybe in a day or so, we can find the road. You know, Claire, he sounds like a paladin. You might want to, like, take some, take some <laughs> lessons from him. Um, I mean, uh -huh. not, I'm not, just, you know, it, it, it would help to sort of fit better the idiom I think that you are trying to convey. I don't know. It's just, it's very impressive the way he sounds. I would follow him. Can he hear all this? I'm... Or are we kind of conversing among ourselves? <laughs> At this point, you guys have joined together, I yeah, imagine. Yeah. He's, yeah, he's ascended the hill. Uh, you stand <laughs> now under the shadow of this desecrated, enormous tree. Picture you guys huddled together. And what meanwhile, I'm scrambling up this hill to join you, but it's going to take me like five minutes. So. <laughs> In full play. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no kidding. Just it is though. um it is a kind of a it is pretty steep and you do feel <clears throat> a little winded when you get to the top yeah. <laughs> Maris I'm, I'm like, teasing of course Claire I would have you uh, no other way than how you are I think that if I were anything more like him you would find yourself on the end of my sword more often I'd like to so. see that sorry let's go me too Maris looks alarmist <laughs> and sort of whispers under her breath, what do you think of this guy? Should we trust him? I want to trust everyone, but I, I've done, that's led me down bad roads in the past. There's your biggest flaw, Maurice, is trusting people. I trusted you. <laughs> you have me at a disadvantage there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pat him on the head. <laughs> All no, right. Mush so, the, the top of your, your your hood around a little bit. <laughs> Jeswaldo steps forward. He removes his hat and he does a very elaborate bow. I am Jeswaldo Togaremo La Tomba del Fuego Santa Maliba Zacatega, the Hotel Santa Cruz de la Rosa, at your service. Welcome to Barovia, land of just terrible, terrible things. Puts his hat. Starch has gone out of him a little bit. He morosely walks back. 
looks up at the tree. I'm Claire. Um, we've perhaps been here, what, like a week, week and a half? I can't keep track of time here. We don't have that much experience on you, but you'll learn quickly. This is a shit place where shit happens and you kind of just got to roll with it. And Athelflaed will hesitantly offer her hand while putting her bow away and say, I just woke up here just a few hours ago. I really don't know what's going on, but if everyone else is all right, then I'm fine with you joining us. And then I will walk off to inspect the tree more. Maris will walk forward, beaming, <laughs> extend a hand. <laughs> and Maris, it's nice to meet you. <laughs> Used to the more courtly handshakes, this takes him by surprise. <laughs> his hand is shaken from his shoulder. Uh, hmm. You said you were, uh, you made a deal. What deal was this? Well, prior Give to him the your deal. name, Alimus, for goodness sake. Well, he knows it now. Thank you, Jaswana. Well, it still is, you know, we must... Manners, people, really. I'm more interested in the deal. With a devil, maybe? Perhaps. Oh. You Perhaps just, not. You probably just missed I him. I know. I see. I know not the nature of my benefactor, but I do feel that this magic, this place, this darkness, I feel the same chill here that I did when I met him. The deal was to correct a mistake, but I assure you, no foul will come of it. You have nothing to fear from me. Interesting. DM, does my um, background... Hmm. I don't know, it might be a stretch. Do I have a way of, by examining any of the uh, heraldry that he has or by his manner or anything like that, do I have an idea of what sort of station he might be coming from? You're a courtier, yeah? Yeah. Um, go ahead and make a history check. Okay. This should be good. Oh! Wow! Natural 20! Yeah, oh, so... Man. Start to the night. First of the you... night. Um, you, very good. You would have known, regardless of the role, looking at the, especially the emblem on the, uh, do, is it a kite shield that you have, yeah, or is it a large, mm -hmm, a large shield that he carries, and the the fine working and subtle uh, uh, heraldry on the armor. This is definitely a someone who comes from probably a ranking family in Baldur's Gate. You've what is the symbol on like his, What is the symbol on his shield? Do you have a um, sense yeah. of that? It's a dark red shield with a white gate uh, that's open, uh, like a, uh, a castle gate that's had its um, portcullis uplifted. Okay. Is it the symbol of Baldur's Gate, or is it something? It's no. symbol of a house. Yeah. Of a house. Yeah. Of Gate. It is a um, a, a patriarch house that Got you it. actually have heard of. You don't remember if you've actually been to the, their court or if you just fought someone who wore something like that once, but um, you recognize it and it, yes, of course, he's completely legit. Oh. Well, the, the symbol is completely <laughs> legit. <laughs> or the, the clothing. Yeah. I will say though, with your, with your background and with your um, check, the way he's presenting himself, while maybe part of one of the more posh houses of Baldur's Gate, um, everything he said, the way he's introduced himself, the way he's treated, like the um, his reaction to speaking to the women versus the men, all that type of stuff is very like tight laced, like um, a nobleman, like you would expect. Um, so, my right. response to your bow with a typical Baldur's Gate patriarch bow. <laughs> Oh boy! Oh. <laughs> I don't. So okay, yeah, good, very good. And I, I don't mean that in a, a sexist way. Just the how he responded to the firm handshake and such is all I mean. That he's not looking down upon anyone. <laughs> I don't. He's, talk he's to just, the women in the it's body. just courtly. Know, There's a courtly <laughs> fashion about the way. <laughs> Dare you? Yeah. Okay, um, now we have to kill this guy. That's the DM said you were an <laughs> asshole. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little voice in so, my head. Um, I'll look to the group and say... Uh, he'll be most courteous to everybody, of course. I'll look to the group and say, well, at least he doesn't wear a Ponty hat. 
Let's go. Uh, that's true. Uh, Good job I brought my travelling hat. Oh, God. <laughs> yes, 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 yes! Shit. <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> Tell me it's Ponzi! I like this guy. Um, one of those, like, tricorn, but Robin Hood-style tricorns, where oh, it's just no. very thin with a feather in it, maybe? Mm -hmm. That's not Ponzi. Brings me good luck, especially in places like this. Are you wearing tights? <laughs> Beneath the armor, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> oh, for no. you to find out. Oh boy. Um, Very good. That kind well, of game. Um, Harrison, <laughs> long story short, druids tried a ritual. We killed the thing that they brought to life. There's some stones in them we have to rip out. This tree is evil as shit. Got to burn it down and then bring some stones back to people who need them. Questions? Speaking of stones, don't try to climb into the ring of stones. Only go through the entrance. That too. Understood. Thank you for the tip. If you have judged these people to be evil, then I see no wrong in it. I shall help you in whatever task you have there. Delightful. Why don't you show him, Desuardo? Why don't you show him flying in? <laughs> and you know, I, like I don't think I will. As I... <laughs> look down at the star-shaped blackened thing that's going down my arm and going out my hand. Oh, wow. I was going to say, the spell is dispersed anyway. I was only joking. It's hard right. to tell sometimes, Elimus. I've also got this horrible... Oh, that's right, I was bitten. Oh, yeah, do you yeah. need help with that situation? <laughs> I, I had some help. I think I could use some... I, yes, I... Oh, my, my max hit points. Oh! That's oh right, my gosh, I down. totally oh, forgot! Oh, crap! <laughs> um, uh, Maris rushes start over. looking around nervously for the hedgehog <laughs> that's going to come out and bite me and I'm going to die. Where did you get bitten, Jess What do you mean? Your back right. hit points is the same as mine now. Right here. I got bit right here. Right right there? Is that where you're pointing? <laughs> oh my god. Maris raises her hand to cast to Cure Wounds and a beautiful sort of silvery light emits from her hand and begins to close the wound. You're so kind. And I assume that it's you I have to thank for, for coming back after I was sure I was dead. Uh, Everything in a way, went black and I, I said, oh, maybe Maris will save me. And, and you did. Thank you. You know, in a way, in a way I did. In a way I did. Yeah. Okay. Just stand still. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. I look to Claire and say, you're not looking too good yourself. Same better days. That's Perhaps right. if you could allow, I could be of assistance with that. If you're equipped. Of course, allow me to demonstrate. And um, he'll take his glove off, and you'll see that tattooed on the back of his hand is the same symbol of his house. And um, wherever you're hurting, he will place a hand there. Eleven, and, right? Um, Eleven. He will cast the cure wounds as well. Thank you. Now, this is the first time we've done this, so let's hope I can find it well enough. Um, is that rolled? It does. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Oh, For eight hit that. points. Eight. Lovely. Is he wearing any kind of a holy symbol? Oh, um, make a perception check. Mm. Mm, I'm interested as well. Mm. So close. Oh, so close to a good roll. 16. Not not that either of you see? No? All right. Well, I appreciate the help. Um, a good rest will knock out the rest of this bullshit. I got almost crushed by a tree earlier. <laughs> Casually. Speaking of oh. trees. Yes, I need yes. to go study it. Okay. So I'm standing at the tree already. So mm -hmm. can I like, like rip off a piece? Is it sort of like dry enough that I can rip it off with my hands? Um, is to you inspect it better? There's um this sort of slick, um almost slimy brackish moisture on it. So you think probably it almost looks like you it's just rotten and you could tear a bunch off. But as as you place your hand on it you feel that oily slick filth on it and beneath that though the bark is very solid um you try and just get a little bit off with like a fingernail and it feels almost like metal under your hand 
It is incredibly solid. Not with your hand. You think maybe with another instrument, perhaps. Uh, as you approach, and also as Elimus begins to approach, you also see sort of covered in this same bit, almost blending in with the foliage, is what looks to be a skeleton lying at the base of the tree, holding an item in its hand. It's a haft, it looks like, which is stuck down into the ground. I will check it out. Okay, you go and you see this. Um, it is indeed holding what looks maybe the end of a pole arm or something. The end of it is it's hard to see exactly where it is. Perhaps buried in the ground or beneath the skeleton, the um, the sort of uh, uh, ground that has grown around it. The skeleton seems to have been there for quite some time. I need some time studying this, and I will start richly casting detect magic. All right. While he's doing that, I want to walk back over to the um, the statue strad and see if I can go about starting to dig those um, uh, those stones out of it. Not wanting to leave Claire alone in her state, Maris follows. Um, are you being careful about this? Or are you just hacking into No, I I want to I want to be careful. Um like, you know, where where it's obvious that I can, you know, just sort of move some stuff out of the way, I'll, you know, kind of be a little haphazard there, but the minute I feel like I'm starting to get close to something, I'll start going as carefully as I can. Okay. Uh you two are able to do that. You notice that now that the magic is not holding it together, it really just tears apart fairly easily. Um and you are able to find a large about a foot, um, foot long green gem, just pulsating ever so slightly. Okay. So only the one. Just the one. Okay. And um, what's his face at the winery said that there were three. Correct. He did say that at one time they had three. Okay. Now, those of you who's over by the tree. Me. Yeah. Okay. Um, Elimus begins to sit down, sort of ritually cast a spell near this skeleton that is covered in this similar ichor that is dripping off the tree. Um, any one else doing anything? I um, was looking at the tree. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Poking it. Okay. Are the, the bodies that are hanging from it, are they, are they low enough to be cut down? A few of them. Uh, Athelflaed, you can make a nature check, should you like. Uh, the last time I cut the body down, it was full of spiders, but... Uh, 18. I'll leave them up there. Okay. Um, Ethelflaed, you looking it up and down, um, you know that um, cutting this tree down would obviously suppress the magic for some time, but the roots go very deep. And as you're putting your hand to it, feeling this corruption, you get the fern gully burn sense going on as you touch it. And it, um, <laughs> <laughs> and you think that even completely chopping it down, burning it, unless it's com the stump is completely uprooted or some other magic is used to take care of it, it the magic will persist and it can possibly regrow. Okay, then I will. I can't talk to Elimus because he's busy. Jeswaldo's available. Jeswaldo is always available. He's the fanciest available. Um, I guess I will start walking towards Jeswaldo, but I don't like him that much. <laughs> he's too fancy for me. <laughs> so I'm going to head over towards uh, Maris. And I will, I guess, take her a little bit aside uh, and let her know what's going on. Um, Maris, do you by any chance have something that would... Um, I don't even know what you could have that would do this, but we need to 
permanently remove this tree and the only way that we can do that involves some sort of strong I guess cleansing magic or, or fire or something because no matter what we do it's very likely that the magic will remain in the soil unless we can destroy the roots entirely and nothing that I can do nothing that I think any of us can do would kill it without involving magic do you have anything that might help or maybe a limus might yeah I mean a limus would be my first choice I have some fire magic but he's the real the real deal uh, Maris go ahead and make a religion check okay Seventeen. With a seventeen, you also know that there are powerful divine magics, um, oftentimes used to consecrate holy sites that can help to sort of remove evil, um, sort of the evil taint from a ground. Um, it's not something that you have access to at the moment. Mm -hmm. But there, it is powerful magic that is just a bit beyond you. I relay that to Athelflaed. Okay. okay. These conversations happen. Elimus, your spell goes off, and you sense mm, a buzzing, magical nature coming from the haft of this uh, that this skeleton is gripping. I studied the magic for a bit. Okay. You also get this sort of sickly necromantic sense from the tree itself, but mm. from um, from the weapon itself, enchantment. Enchantment. I looked at a group. I need more time. Yeah. Sort of look around. Is it? It's does magical. it feel uh, safe? <laughs> I, excuse me. It would be transmutation. Transmutation. Mm. Does it feel safe around? I mean, that's a stupid question. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> stupid question. Is there stupid an immediate problem. threat? <laughs> That would prevent us from spending enough time for Alimus to do his work. Sorry, what did you ask? Is there an immediate threat to our safety that would prevent us from spending time here? But you see, nothing's attacking you at the moment. Oh, the wolves, they come so quickly. Can I see the statue of Strahd from where we're standing at the tree? Mm -hmm. That's back in the ritual circle, not too far. Uh, that's where um, Claire went to, and she's sort of okay. digging through the chest of this enormous statue. Okay. You can see her just retrieving what looks to be a large green gem. Then I'll ask Jeswaldo, who I picture myself standing next to. Um, I'll just motion towards the statue, and I'll say, the lord of this land. Uh Yes, but I think in a deeper sense than you or I understand it. How are things on the Sword Coast, by the way? Very well. Well, as I remember them, at least. Although I have a feeling that I'm further away from home than I've ever been before. Remember what I said about thinking things were a nightmare? Yes, I'm... I think it might be more accurate to say that this land, everything that we see around us is actually the lord of this land's nightmare. And we are all trapped in it. I didn't know such magic existed. It gets worse, I'm afraid. 
Well, oh, no, what piece, what the crimes you may have, may or may not have committed in your life. I have committed quite a few. But I always thought that man, at some point there would be a judgment and then it would be over, for better or for worse. Apparently, people who die here stay here. Have Their souls to... never leaving. Treating with this lord, perhaps throwing oh. yourself upon his mercy or judgment. Or... I thought about that at first, but oh, he's just the worst. Yes, I've come across that sort. Perhaps he just left, sort. actually. I oh. thought we had a chance. I really tried to goad him into staying. Maybe we would have died, but with the better chance of taking him out here outside of his power than anywhere else, I would think. Well, we still have things left to find that might help us in attempting to remove him. So perhaps we should wait until we're a little powered up, for lack of a better term, before trying to take him on again. It seemed like he kind of just toyed with us. That uh, that's exactly that... what we wanted him to think. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't Lord. say that with a straight face. Sorry, Lord Harrison. will end the dream and therefore free us from this land, yes? That's we think, hope. yeah. Then let's be about it, I suppose, as you say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What, um, do, what do you search for in this place? Something to help, you said. A friend mm -hmm. of yours? Well, so, so far, we've located two things and currently have one of them still in our possession. Um, sure Maris, um, she possesses an amulet that seems to be especially powerful in um, um, affecting vampires. Um, well, she's she's a vampire. That, that's he's a very a important, yeah, very well, important yes. detail. Yes, he's a vampire. Yes. Please yeah. lead with the vampire fact next time. Yes. Yes. Um, sorry. It's it's right. just sort of become so background to my. If you look on the statue's face right there, that little piece of birch sticking out that looks like a fang. <laughs> that's actually a fang. That's. Yeah. Yes, well, I understand that vampirism. vampirism and dark magic may become quite blasé, having spent a, year, a week here, but to myself, yeah. it's rather news. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Entirely fair. My sincerest apologies for throwing that curveball. Um, because baseball initially... metaphors are something that Claire would know about. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, well, I agree we... that we should perhaps train a bit more before taking him off. Yes. Right. We have learned some of his weaknesses. Um, Sunlight, surely being one of the only. Yeah, it seems tradition. to annoy him more than do damage. We attempted that in our most recent encounter. Um, but we know there's a sword, and there's also an ally floating around somewhere out there. Um, actually, the, the protege of someone that we've already met and worked with, um, who through divine magics that were worked early in our time here, um, where she was revealed to us as someone who might be able to help. Very well. I assume that you've had sufficient leads for these people. Um, we, uh, we have a pretty good idea of where both of them are, both the Wonderful. sword and this individual. Then I shall stay my sword for Strahd for now, and he escapes my justice for another day. What in? I don't even know what to say to that. I'm just gonna Maris, go check out what's going on with the tree. Maris Join me at the locks tree. eyes with Harrison and is like, I like your style. Is, is Mary swooning? Uh, a little bit. She's like, maybe he's cute. Like she can't tell yet. She's still. He's very clean cut. That's the only way to really describe him. As I as I'm walking away, I'm just gonna I grab Maris by the shoulder and lean in and whisper, oh. just. Control yourself, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Maris is deeply well, offended. I should have left you to die on the field. Oh, I, as I just, if. I just want to make sure. It is not our plan to leap here tonight, right? Well, what, what time of day is it even at this point? You guys left and did this in the morning. It is probably getting to be about midday. Um, Elimus, are you casting... Identify. I am indeed. Does that? Do you have to be making 
contact with the object the entire time. I don't know. Let me confirm. You do definitely have to touch it at some point. You choose one object that you must touch yep. throughout the cast of the spell. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. So you just touch it while you're casting it. You just mm -hmm. kind of rest your hand on it, sticking out of the ground. Yeah. All right. You complete your spell as your companions begin to join you. Um, this is a magical axe. It does um, not give any bonuses to hit. However, it, when wielded against a plant or any sort of plant creature, it will do an extra D8 of damage. If only we would have had this beforehand. That's fun. I only saw the half, so I pull it out, I take it, and then there's the axe head underneath. And now you're king of England. I'm assuming, I, I didn't see the axe head of it. I'm assuming I just saw the haft. Exactly. Yeah. It was buried in the ground. Um, do you pull it out? I do. Okay. As you do, your vision starts to blur. Or so you think. This is a kind of a fast and loose battle map I've got here. Forgive me. Nice. But, Why do you um, need a battle map? I'm excited. Here's the uh, what, what are you doing, skeleton Peter? jade if you would like to put oh your... God. Put I Linus over here. No, I don't need to be on at the base of this tree. I am over here by this twenty sided. <clears throat> I'm with Claire. Okay. Is there a relationship between this tree? I mean, how far away is it from this the is about, circle of stones? This uh probably about a hundred feet, so I know you guys. Oh Harry's my god, huge! Harry's huge. <laughs> no, yeah. So is Aha! I, I um, am the largest! Oh yeah. <laughs> no, don't resize. <laughs> no. Too late. Oh, you're not. And I was like, I'm five foot two, I should have a huge <laughs> The The ropes and such hanging from this tree begin to shift and twitch as you remove this axe, and you can also see out of your peripheral vision that some of the stumps from the hewn trees around this one. You see one also shift back and forth. There's this little hole in one of the stumps that you would imagine like perhaps a raccoon or another little creature living in. And you see two red lights appear as it seems to rise from the ground growing a root assumes an arm like shape and then grows long and thick at the end growing itself into like a club arm the other gets wider almost like a large disc as if it's creating itself a club and shield and starts to walk towards uh well it's actually right next to you harry Oh boy. One near Ethelflad. Oh, no. And then you can see before they were indistinguishable from the tangled vines and terrible ropes hanging. But as they move to attack, you can see that all along these have been the disguised disguised <laughs> blights hanging from the tree. That oh, attack now that you are this. have removed oh, no. the axe. And we shall roll initiative, my yeah. friends. Uh, I was praying it was going to be something like really cute and harmless. And then I, I was know, like, oh, I, right. I saw your face and you said, right. Kind of looks, like, like, yeah. looks, like, looks like Orko the wizard from He Man. Do you remember that? Oh my god, yes. <laughs> I guess I could roll. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, I got distracted by raccoons. No one's surprised. <laughs> <laughs> At least there weren't otters. Uh, yeah. not this time. We're just gonna check off all the small furry creatures for you. We got one, oh, two, failed. three, four. Oh. Yeah, I failed again. Make sure your token is selected when you roll the initiative, so it'll add you to the tracker. Yeah. Maris, your first was a twenty, however, so. Oh great. I'll correct that. And Athelflaed, what was your first? 19. Oh, wow, first look at 20. you guys. 
I like that We're one much better than this. Go. <laughs> Pretty good initiative there for most. Huh. Just uh, Waldo <laughs> with a stunning dude. twenty-five. Oh my god. Wow! What? Look out! Look out, everyone! I draw my sword and I rush forward. One, two, three, and I will attack this one with my silver rapier. And I will shout out, "I am a big fan of woodpecker woodpeckers!" And I'll just attack it, and I will do <laughs> that much damage if I hit with a fifteen. A 15 will hit. And then I will bonus action disengage. And actually, I don't have to do that. I will bonus action dash. And I will just sort of like try and hit each of the ones next to him with my the flat of my blade as I do, getting okay. as much attention as I can. So that was you... one, two, three, four, five, six. Then I will bonus action dash. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. These creatures do have these long vines that reach out. You, and if you would like to reconsider that, it's a little hint. It looks like as you are threatening the one that others could potentially reach you. Oh. Uh, well, thank you for that. Uh, I will take it instead. Then I will one, two, three, four, five. Now, it's easier to say when something's wielding a spear, or sure. it's, a, it's Let very me just large. Double and check here. Yeah, you're good there. Mm -hmm. That's thirty feet of movement. So it can't, it can't attack me with fancy footwork. It can't, but its buddy can. If they had a feature, if they could indeed reach with their complete finds. Just it's up to you what you want to do. All right. So you're saying that I should bonus action disengage. I'm not. I'm just saying it looks like they might have reach, which is tough to All describe. Right. But yeah. So. All right. Anything else uh, for just Waldo? Um, so, yeah. Um... Let me just get away a little further, I think. I might actually change where I go now. I was going to try and lead them away, but... So I attacked that one. I did 16 yep. points of damage. And I will bonus action disengage and then continue my movement. To... Here? Can I make it there? Yep. Okay. Looks good to me. All right, now I'm done. Sorry, everyone. You're good. You will tag off to Claire. Okay. Um, so just to, so I understand, is it only these ones that have the extra long vines? Or these, is it... all of these look to be vine-like creatures. You actually mistook them for tangles of rope and vine before, but now that they take form to attack, there's almost this humanoid, um, shadow inside that seems to be manipulating, manipulating okay. them in a way, so. Okay. Um, alrighty. So that probably. Okay. I'm like, I'm totally tapped out. <laughs> I'll just uh, step in um, over here and try to slash at it with my long sword a couple times. Um, let's see here. Ooh, that was horrible. I rolled a nine. Nine, yeah. Um, um though, I think slashing through the jungle should be easy. These, yeah. they sort of move under the the hit of your sword, and it doesn't slice through, even though it is magical. All right. Well, I'll I'll come around with a natural <laughs> twenty then. So, okay. on my second attack. Good follow up. Um, so, uh, fourteen damage. Okay. Um. Smite. I, I right. completely tapped out. Oh, oh shoot! No. Um, so I'm I'm gonna yell. Um, hey, Limus, maybe toss that to someone who can use it. Um, Maris, maybe someone. Ah, uh, <laughs> I'm just hold the sword out against all these. Vines. We're all out of pithy. I comments. haven't told anyone the what week. the axe does yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I haven't told anyone what the axe does yet. Well, Maris. Even so. 
Yeah, Maris, it is your turn. Okay, so Maris <laughs> is very disappointed in this turn of events as she really wanted to see a cute raccoon. Um, but she's looking around at her comrades and sees they're overwhelmed. And so she begins to cast Bless. Um, unfortunately, she has to pick someone to not bless. <laughs> Uh, and it's not personal, um, but new, new guy, new guy. I was like, new Harry, guy. you're Harry, you're new. So. I get it. I still might turn on you yet because they've got the upper hand. So he's also <laughs> not like bleeding and, and bruised. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so Maris casts bless on a second level bless on the four original party members. I see how it is. Okay, here we go. This Strahd guy's starting to sound not so bad. She tries to do it covertly so no one notices. <laughs> gotcha. Um, uh, anything else for Maris? Um, uh, let's see. No, I guess she'll stay where she is. Okay. So, the Vine Blights will attack. In fact, I mean, I know this that one. I know that he has to do what he has to do, but I really wish Sauri was here. Oh uh, yeah, one. this one, you will see. It will just sit and and the it seems to unravel itself, reaching down and around your ankles and your feet, spreading out into a fifteen foot radius here. So everyone within 15 feet of this one is in difficult terrain. Sorry, was that aimed at me as well? Indeed. You are... No, you are just without outside of its range. Um, but Athelflaed and Maris, Claire and Jaswaldo need to make a strength saving throw. Fifteen. Natural fifteen is a one. success. No. Oh, again, again, against fucking plants. <laughs> oh my gosh. Claire, you are restrained. That is its action. One will move around to here, and from there attack Jaswaldo. That is that that's restrained and not grappled. Correct. Yikes. Um, he has a 17 attacking with a, a that advantage. That is a miss. The next two are attacking the one who triggered this action here. Actually. I hope my staff up and say, I'm not your enemy. Uh, Athelflaed, what was it? Did you get, did you make a saving throw? I was trying to figure out if I get advantage or not. Why would you get advantage? That's always <laughs> that's, a good the... question. Other than, can I please have advantage? <laughs> um, are they undead? Nope. Well, I wanted them to be undead. Oh. That's why. Okay, it was a strength saving. Get your own mm -hmm. game. Oh. No! You are also restrained. Okay. It's two nat ones, guys. We got to stop this. We're in the nat this. one club. Mm. Oh my god. That, 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 no, that, this will not got stand. Got some good targets. Um, As the one walks up to me, I hold my staff up and I say, I'm not your enemy. And it looks at you, its head turns, and then it walks to attack Athelflaed, ignoring you. That wasn't a will say, that was my staff. Mm -hmm. I know. You should try that, Athelflaed. Do the same thing. Athelflaed, I have a uh, 23 <laughs> to attack you for nine bludgeoning damage. And then one will attack Maris. Oh gosh. This is assuming you have some sort of item that lets you talk to these people, and that's not just a really reasonable vine blight. So right. <laughs> I was like, have we, have we oh, oh, okay. Okay. Thank you for making that clear. I'll attack someone else. Yeah, that's uh, exactly right. Oh sorry. No, someone else should try it. I mean I just I just thought I'd give it a go and it, and Peter listened, so Yeah, yeah. sure. Good manners, right? They cost nothing. Yeah. <laughs> and Maris, I have a seventeen to hit you. A seventeen hits. Okay. Uh, ooh, mm. Max damage at 14. Oh my goodness. Okay. That's cool. That's fine. And you are restrained. Awesome. 
It's not good. Uh, <laughs> bad. So the nine for me didn't hit, by the way. Uh, it was nine bludgeoning damage. It was a 23 yeah. to hit. I was really hoping that it wouldn't work. 23 to hit curses. I'm just going to try everything tonight. See what I can okay. get out of. Okay. Um, these two also were approaching Elimus, the trigger. They look and see as, as if he just holds up the staff. You see them look at it and then just turn away and attack. Um, that's the way it was set up. Sorry. Say the same. Sorry, Harry. Say the same. Uh, Say it. Um, I'm not your enemy. <laughs> <laughs> they attack you. Uh, of course. <laughs> First attack is a 14. Uh, that's a miss. Yeah, I but with my shield. Um, the next one's a 23. Ooh. Uh, do I want to cast shield? Yeah, I'll, I'll cast shield. I feel I'm going to get hit quite hard a few times. So I'll okay. cast shield and bring my AC up to 24. Wow. <laughs> yeah. This <laughs> this one will attack you. Uh, he, natural 20. Nothing to do about um, that. Uh, if this is like the way, like, if... If this is kind of like magical, but not right. So he raises his shield, and then the portcullis on his shield closes, and suddenly he's got like a larger shield around him that's sort of incorporeal. Nice. That's really so cool. That's so cool. <laughs> I love that so much. And yet he yeah. still got hit. Welcome to Barovia. He still got hit. <laughs> <laughs> he crit you with a. Oh my It's God. a twenty-four to hit, but a natural twenty. Yeah, um, because, right, he got me shield. So it's fifteen points of bludgeoning damage. Oh wow! On that's the crit. A lot. The next, and you are now restrained. Ah. Rest will try to attack you. Um, wow. Good old advantage 22 missing you. That's that's nice. <laughs> um, and then I have a, uh, wow, yeah. A couple more misses. I mean, I'm crit fishing with their uh, stat bonus. <laughs> so 24, you say. This large yeah. um, creature, which I will... Um, display for you guys here. That's what it looks like. What large creature? Ooh. It's medium, actually. Oh, okay. But um, that I, I think I displayed it in chat for you. This one here, next oh, to Harry, will so come bad. and try to bludgeon you. Okay. Um, 23 and 21 to hit, even at a restrained target. You are... <clears throat> yeah. I say, even as I'm facing the others, it just bounces off that sort of caged white yeah. shield thing that's around me. But Who's I can... Fun? Attack Athelflaed with a 14 and a 25. Uh, well, the 14 doesn't, but the 25 does. 17 points of bludgeoning. <gasps> no! Oh. oh my god. And it is your turn, Athelflaed. It's all of their so, turns. Can I crawl in the corner and just cry? <laughs> um, Apple sad. Yeah. <laughs> see. Apple sad. <laughs> I'm restrained, so I can't go any. Um. Well, I guess. I guess I will give it the old Athel Flat special then. <laughs> so, wh why not? We'll find out soon why not, I think. You are in melee range, so if you are attacking with a ranged weapon, it will be a disadvantage. No, you're Unless right. Unless you have a way to separate yourself. Which I don't. Are you? It. It's. It has to be within five feet. It doesn't actually melee range. If it's a ranged attack, if it's a it got reach, I don't think it's the same thing. Yeah, that's to correct. Be within that, five feet. That that is correct. Um, but it is in five within five feet of her. Also. Oh. Yeah, I was like, but Which DM, is her? DM says. <laughs> oh. I'm sorry, I didn't scroll up. The yeah. one going toe to toe. Of course, of course, like, you're, he's right next to you. The yes. one that just bopped her on the head with his yep, arm. Got it. I got it. <laughs> I got it. Sorry. Oh God. Okay. Well, then I will. I have to do melee. I'll do melee. Um. I guess I will stab with my two daggers. My brain has just died, and I apologize. Can I blame yeah. Friday? Do I D20 and then click yeah, yeah, on yeah. the um, So you, you, if you click on your dagger on the character sheet, yeah. it should pop up, and there should be a thing on the upper right-hand corner, like a red button that says roll 20 or something. 
It didn't go. Okay. There it is. There it is. There's one dagger. Cool. 19. Will hit this creature, though it seems to barely pierce its armor. It's a this wood is thick and rigid, but um, yeah, deal seven points. Very nice. Okay, and then other dagger. Thirteen will glance off as it imposes that sort of disc-like shield in between the dagger and itself. Anything else, Athelflaed? I wish. Yeah, there's... There's... I mean, short of trying to detangle myself. Can too I? late for that. Yeah, I was like, that's too late for that. That no, would there's... be your action yeah. to try and untangle yourself. <laughs> I told you, I'm just going to try to get away with everything tonight. Um, yeah, that's it for me. <laughs> Limus. Okay, Limus will casually walk over to William uh, Harrison rather <laughs> and hand him the axe just casually and say use this it will hurt them more and while I go and save my friends and then 5 10 15 will then what point will then point to these four <laughs> creatures and say Arania tell them and then just web will just splatter out all over them for a DC okay. 16 deck save so that's a uh, 20 foot square, <clears throat> correct? Uh, 20 foot square, cube. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Let's see. I believe if you drew it kind of like this on one end, it would get all of them. If you yeah. drew a nice side sideways cube. Okay. Yeah. Works for me. Dexterity saves. Oh, I'm slow. I've got a 10, a 4, a 9, and a 16. 16. Will be okay, I believe. What did I say? 16? I did say 16, yeah. Yeah. All right. And it's a non aggressive um, action. So this will, it will, it is not. You're right. Well, that's debatable. But it does not activate until the start of their turn. Uh, the is it not? Web. Web, the roll happens at the start of their turn. The, if they start their turn in a webbed area, they have to make a dexterity saving throw. Oh, okay. Um, it, well, I will still use those rolls. It's completely fine. Um, they're not going to go anywhere between now and the start yeah, of their yeah, turn. Yeah. So, uh, so it's fine. All right. Harry. All right. My first combat turn. Hooray. Um, yeah, so Har uh, Harrison is surrounded by these creatures. He'll say... Um, Hark foul beings wrought from the very land itself. Allow me to send you back to the soil. And he will cow. He'll hit yeah, them with a the long sword. You think you No, use the axe. This guy. <laughs> use the axe. Oh, the axe. Wait, okay. Can I use this axe without using you a bonus axe? You can take your words action? and shove them right back up your ass, just yeah, Waldo. Use uh, it. Fair enough. Harry. <laughs> um, um, you, uh, it's... Like, if he hands it to you, you can. If you just drop your sword and take I that, you can do it. Definitely do that then. Okay. Yeah, I'll trust this guy. He looks like he knows what's going on in Barovia. Um, then I assume I hit with the same. It's not my hex weapon, which is bad. Because then yeah. I'll just be rolling with normal stats. You I, might want to take that into consideration. I or... appreciate the thought, so I'm going, I'm going to stick with the longsword until I can use that properly, because I need to hit this, and I'm rolling with disadvantage anyway, so... I'm going for a vine blight, by the way. Okay. Uh, 17 seven. will hit. Oh, perfect. So I hit him, and then I raise my shield again, and the portcullis uh, emboldens, and I'll cast Defensive Flourish. <laughs> okay. So it's a 1d8, which is my Bardic Inspiration dice. Uh, how do I roll that? Because I can only click them. It's just a 1d8. Should I roll it manually? Yeah, so Sorry, just manually. um slash. Yeah. You can do slash roll 1d8. Oh, and then okay. click your click the damage under your longsword to deal the oh, yeah, um, so. regular weapon damage too. So he takes uh, one-handed, 11, plus 4, 15 damage. Nice. And my AC raises by 4 to 23. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. All right. Which uh, and oh sorry and also I am going to throw in a healing word on the most damaged member of the party, which I assume is Jezwaldo. 
Uh, uh, I'd say Claire. Not anymore, yeah. Uh, Claire, Claire, maybe? Okay. Uh, what's the range on healing word? 30. 30. At least, yeah, 30. Uh, is that Claire? Or is. Oh, they're all out of range of me. <laughs> Never mind. You're oh, wait, that's not me. Yeah, Hang on. That's Claire there. This is. Is this. Th it's this 60 is feet, and you are. Ah, so you're good. Feet. Everyone's in 60 feet. All right. Healing I'll word is 60 feet? It's 60 oh. feet. I will. Uh, Why am I keep getting these things wrong? Much obliged. And I will cast healing word. What's, what's the word, Harry? What is the word? The word is uh, perseverance in the face of overwhelming odds. And I will heal her for six health. Delightful. And the healing word in that phrase is actually the. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because it, it sounds like a... Um, it just it makes me think of like someone I'd click on in uh in like a <laughs> right, RTS yeah. game. <laughs> Perseverance <laughs> in the face of overwhelming odds. <laughs> on my way. <laughs> I'm carrying too much. <laughs> oh god. Oh. All right, six points of healing. And I sense a soul in need of answers. The baton to Jeswaldo. Which one of these things is grappling Claire? Uh, the one right in front of her. And that's the one I hit. Correct. I will attack it again with my silver rapier. So are they are they classed as restrained now? Or? Yeah, restrained. Uh, that's what I was Wow, anyway. that's not a good roll at all. I rolled a ten. Uh, unfortunately, a ten is not going to do it. Are they, are they restrained? Yeah. Are who? Are they restrained? Oh, because the, the web. What a web. Um, that's a good point. Um, yes, that those three, those front three are. Thank you for reminding me. Oh, so I get advantage. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's good news. Montage. Gotta be better. <laughs> 16. That will do it. Okay, that will be... Wow, that's a lot of sneak attack. 23 points of damage. You will see the ones at the feet of your... The, the vines at the feet of your friends wither and die with this one. Remember, we have to bless. Bonus action. Yo, that's right. I will bonus yeah. action disengage. And you said it's difficult terrain? Not any longer, since that one's dead. Who used the action? So. Oh, good. Um, and I will... Hop. 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 Wait, I can't get out of his, his range, right? Hop, hop. Hop. Hop to there, and I will say, I've got this! Okay. And I'm done. Claire. So I'm no longer restrained, yes? Correct. Lovely. Then I will step this way and try to cleave through these guys with my long sword. If anything wants to go. That one is also restrained, so you can crit fish if you should. I will. I will Please. crit fish if I have the opportunity. Oh. Not quite as good. So 25 for 13 damage. Gotcha. And I will throw another couple rolls in there and try to hack and slash again. Uh, again, if 25 for 14 damage. Um, yeah, so when we're rolling twice, I always take the... Mm. Remember, you can Let's shift, see. shift, the click. No, you're right, yeah. No, this is good, this, you... this is fine, yeah. Okay. Uh, 14, that will do it for this fine plight. Remember, you can shift click to roll with advantage. Oh, yes. Thank you. Got it. Very nice. Yay. Maris, you're up. Okay, so Maris will cast. Um, sorry, I was about to sneeze. <laughs> Woo! Okay. Maris, Maris will cast sneeze. Maris cast sneeze in hopes that they all get sick. I don't know. Bless you. That's how she cast me. Oh, Rona. <laughs> Ugh. Um, Maris will cast Sacred Flame. Okay. On, uh, on which one? Uh, beep boop bop. So, on this one. Okay. Yes. Dex save, I have a six. Okay. And... Cast it. Fifteen. You will hear the sort of um, damp wood that makes up these vines start to sizzle and pop under the oppressive, sacred heat of your throne night. 
12 damage, yeah. Oh, sorry, yeah, for 12 damage. Cool. Um, and then, okay, so I think I've hopefully figured this out, but can I now cast Spiritual Weapon as my bonus action? You can. Yay! Okay, so I'm going to cast Spiritual Weapon. What does your Spiritual Weapon look like? Yes, my Spiritual Weapon is sort of like, well, it's a crescent moon, but it hangs actually not in the way that you would expect vertically, but rather horizontally. And has like little lovely sparkly, almost star-like things that cascade down from the arc of the crescent. That's so nice. Now murder stuff with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rain down hellfire. She rolled a two. I think we're, oh. <laughs> um, is, okay, that, is that one well... restrained? This one is not. Is the one that is not restrained. All righty. Okay. It is their turn. Do I get another saving throw against this Halimus, or is it? Um, just... I'm assuming it's every round. Yeah. Are you sure? I mean, I'm, I I don't know. Some. Uh, let me just quickly add the webs on. Each creature at the start of its turn that enters the jury uh, that enters them during its turn must make a dexterity save. On a foul save, the creature is restrained as long as it remains in the webs. So it's restrained as long as it remains in the webs until it breaks free. Uh, a okay. creature restrained by the webs can use its action to make a strength check against your spell save DC. If it succeeds, it is no longer restrained. So DC 16 strength save. Okay. Well, this one is going to repeat its action from before while it is restrained. Uh, it Well, it didn't. This is the one that did it before. But it is going to reach out with its vines and have the Maris... Claire and just Waldo make a strength saving throw. Don't forget the bless. bless. Ooh. Look at just Waldo. I'm impressed by your strength saving throws. I always think I'm going to get you, and it always and I never do. <laughs> just Waldo is a man of well, many talents. My bad. Ignore my roll. It's okay. fine. You guys are all super, <laughs> super uh, in the clear. Rolled a twenty three. Um, but this uh, will reach out its vines towards Maris ah. to constrict you. The 22 to hit. Uh, yes, that hits. <laughs> um, four, six points of damage. Okay. And it will move here and here and out of the um, webbed area. Uh, the creatures will again look at Elimus and just look back towards um, the bard and now <laughs> make some attacks. There you go. I can't believe I'm just rolling a bunch You're of attacks at advantage here. I have a one more crit. <laughs> you really has a 23 AC. So. Yeah, he has a natural 20 <laughs> for 24. Uh, for nine me. points of damage. Not okay. that not an impressive crit, but um, you will deal nine points. That is all four of their attacks. Okay. The other one behind you will try and give you a bop on this go. Swinging once with its club at AC 20 and another one at AC 21. Yeah, misses, unfortunately. Man. That's, you're going to be... Uh, Problem. <laughs> yeah, that's fun. Let's see. Now, two attacks against the ranger. Nope. <laughs> I was hoping I'd sneak <laughs> under that one. Continue. Um, are you... Have you have you been restrained? I'm trying to remember. From the one that was that got killed. So I'm no, All right, longer. no longer restrained. So then in that case, I have 11 to hit and a nine to hit. Neither work. Mm. They both miss. <laughs> and it is your turn. I am going to move, unsurprisingly. Um, and I will get behind Maris. Is that... Yeah, that's just fine. You would enough. provoke attacks of opportunity from both of them by doing so. I mean, then I, I'll hurry back very quickly. I will 
want to move. I will go. I will go somewhere. Um, can I head over by Alimus or is that too far? Um, as long as you don't leave their threatened radius, so um, you can move. But Oop. trying to. But you could move to this space without leaving. But this one will be able to take it. I know. Um, a little bit new and refreshing for you. So this one, you would be moving out of his threat range, which is five feet. So it would provoke the attack of opportunity. Crud on a stick. <sighs> Fine. And I will, I will just flip over there just because I want to move. Okay. And, and then I suppose I will do my dagger stabs again. Because everything that I have is geared for range. So, I will do... Oh wait, I can do two attacks per action, so if I'm dual wielding, I can do four stabs? So you can do... Um, you can make your two attacks and then use a bonus action, if you would like, to do an offhand attack with a different dagger. So three total stabs. Yes. Two okay. to at max damage. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and we will go stabby, stabby one. And this is against the big one? Yes. The one that keeps bopping me on the head. Okay. And That's a hit. Thank God. And then we'll do stabby, stabby, piercing stab. Ooh. Very good rolls. And then... Bonus action for again, run over yeah, one. Mm -hmm. And this one, we will... You do not, not worry oh, about. Yeah. <laughs> Natural one will miss automatically. I know, I was like, and ignore that. <laughs> that sounds like your full turn, yes? Yes. All right. Elimus. Elimus will walk over here... We'll walk to there, look to the group, and how are you handling this, Claire? Are we good? And they'll turn You're around. Muted, but... <laughs> we got the idea. The emotion was the same. <laughs> <laughs> he will turn around and look at the creatures in front of him. And he will speak the words of Ignis Terabem. And from his hand is a ray of fire hitting down towards those I love it when they line up for you like four. that. <laughs> yeah. It looks like you can get five of them, right? Yep. All right. The big guy, or my deck saving here? DC 16, yep. Big guy has a 17. The little ones... Divine Blights, nine, eight, five, three. So, wow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Uh, Show me that damage. It's not much. It's only 14 damage. Fire damage, that is. Okay. This one, the first little one here, will be incinerated. Hooray. This one will be incinerated. Okay. Nice. This one <clears throat> takes damage minus 15. And this one takes some damage. So you have dealt damage to these two, incinerated two, and this one takes less damage from having dodged. Actually, the vine blights coated in this ichor. The evil nature of them they seem to burn away but not like you would expect a, a wooden creature to the these larger creatures that have emerged from the stump the fire seems very effective against them oh wow and really it's almost like kindling beginning to catch inside so which ones the block these ones or the large stumpy guys that you see the red ones the orcos yeah what well, they like taking like 50 percent extra damage or something it seems they've taking extra damage yeah 
Very nice. And, one uh, might say 100% extra damage. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. What a skill from 1 to 100. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one might say that. And he will continue just walking this way. Okay. That'll be about it for me. All right. Holding his own over here, <laughs> Mr. Harry. Still fighting, guys. <laughs> now, Thanks, I'm that... okay over here. <laughs> <laughs> the guy who died, is that the one restraining me? Or have uh, I just restrained yeah. as a general thing? No, you, um, that was the one that, that was restraining you. That was the one, yeah. You are no longer right. restrained. And can I move here then? Uh, you are not leaving any threat ranges. They have okay. a, like we said, they have 10 foot reach, but you're still, you're golden there. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, I will then declare this guy my Hexblade's curse. Gotcha. So I'll point my shield to him, and um, I guess I'll mark him um, with a black portcullis on him, so I know who it is. And then I will strike at him with my longsword. Um... Which is there. Uh, That's going to hit. Six. Okay, so I'll do that. And then I will spend a bardic inspiration to whip around with my sword and try and hit the one behind me as well. And sort of a spinning flourish around. Then I'll do a slashing flourish, um, which is an extra 1d8. Well, I'll roll the long sword damage. So the wood guy takes 14. Okay. Plus five. And then the guy behind me also takes five. All right. Do you get extra damage from the Hexblade's Curse too? Oh, yeah. Um, plus three. So he takes, what's that, 19, 22 damage, this guy. Yep. And the guy behind me takes just five as standard. Very cool. Therefore, ending my turn. Right on. And my Good AC turn. is back down to 19. Gotcha. Just Waldo. Uh, Jeswaldo, will uh, this fellow is still restrained, correct? From the web. Mm hmm. I will attack with my silver rapier. Hitting AC 20, doing 16 points of damage. And this one will crumple. And I will um, use all of my movement to get over to here. May I use acrobatics to flip around tree roots and stuff so I don't have to go way out so entering it well i guess elimus do you drop concentration on the web i would ask um if they're dead then yes yeah okay there's no web um however it will require an acrobatics check to get over these large roots cool. um, so I, I'm, are... I'm, I'm planning on going around the back of the tree here okay do you need a single roll or a roll for to get over one of these roots uh yeah you can do a single roll to see how you fare all right well, that happens. I forgot. I hit a 19 on that woodward, and he's my exploits curse, so it's a crit. Oh, okay, yeah. Very so, nice. Um, it's just roll an another. So I should remember that. I, it, uh, also, I think it doubles your flourish, too. Oh, does it? Yeah, all dice so down. All dice rolled. Uh, all dice rolled. It is a damage dice, I suppose. So the woodward guy takes an extra six damage. Okay. Worth knowing, unless it was the last thing that needed to kill him. But yeah, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. No problem. Cool. Jeswaldo rolled a 25 on his acrobatics. That's more than enough. So he will <laughs> flip, flip, flippity, flip, flip, flop. Ha! And the he's great done. Great bouncing, wow. Jeswaldo. You have 80 feet of movement. Wow. Like so. Yeah. It's actually, it's, it's a, it's a, oh, wait, I attacked. So I don't have all of my movement. Sorry. You have 60, yeah. 60 feet. That's so right. So you'd get about right here. So get about right there. Or there. Yeah. Even, let's see. So I was here. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, and six. I could get to there. Yep. All right. Checks out. Clear. Muted. He's muted. Keep doing that, sorry. Muted. Um, I would like to step um on top of this one's body. Make and... it. Just kidding. <laughs> no. 
don't okay. say that to me. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll, I'll slash away at this guy with my long sword. Thirteen. Bless. It parries. Bless. Oh, yeah, bless. Oh, I forgot about that doing attack. Um, roll. Maris, have you been damaged during your bless spell? Oh, wait, I have, yeah. All right. Roll a concentration saving throw, please. So a constitution save. All right. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh. Unfortunately, <laughs> bless fades. No. <laughs> as does <laughs> as does Liz. Um, <laughs> Bye, guys. See you later. All right, uh, that's okay. That's okay. Yeah, he I will know. parry away your strike on okay. the first one. Well, I'll try to get past his parry the second time. Oh gosh, I'm rolling horribly. Thirteen again. Mm -hmm. Same result. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Uh, wait. Uh, shut uh, up. Uh, uh, wait. Maybe I can try the Ethel Flood. Um. Do I have advantage on that roll? Oh yeah. That's the true <laughs> Ethel Flood Yikes. special. Do uh, the Ethel Flood. Yeah. No shame. Uh, I've got advantage because. I have a permit that says I do what I want. Yeah. Any bonus I actions? Out this card. Um, nice. Work for me against the plants. I I don't have anything <laughs> left. Like I said, I'm like completely tapped out. So. Gotcha. Uh, then oh, yeah. we're down to Maris. Okay, so Maris, understanding that her bless has faded, will cast it again at second level. Whee! Yes. <laughs> um, Permabless. And she's still gonna have to leave out the new guy because it looks like he's got it under control this time. Okay, yes, it's not no. just that he's the new guy. You're, <laughs> you're it's totally that is just negging him, really. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Um, he's clearly doing okay. It's because you're British, Harry. Just wanted to say that. She's yeah, like, that I've dealt with well. it my whole life. <laughs> British stigmatism. Oh my God. Aww. Um, so I cast Bless on the four original party members and, okay. and Harry. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I will attempt to hit one of the baddies, this baddie, with my I think you've um, cast Bless. spiritual weapon. Oh, spiritual weapon. Oh, yeah. that's not concentration, is it? Nope, it isn't. Nice. It is a stupid spell. You I can move it and make good. that attack. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, oh, lol. Just kidding. Well, okay. So if I'm out of spell slots, but I've already cast it, I can still roll for it, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. It's still active for the duration. Great. Oh, 10. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's still just uh, hanging out, looking pretty, not doing a lot of damage. But guys, look how pretty it is. <laughs> yeah, it looks, it's beautiful. For what it's worth, it, it helps me like on like a spiritual level, just like for my my moral support. So. Yeah, that's what it's for. See, yeah. I've got Great. two targets now up here with this wood woad. He is going to, um, you also notice um, this one seems to, on at the start of its turn, grow back places that have been damaged. You can ah. see little bits of vine and moss growing fast, regenerating. However, this one doesn't do that, as you see a bit of embers kind of smoking away. Does not seem to regenerate. So it clubs both of you. No! <laughs> um, Athelflaed, I have a 9, and against Claire, I have a 25. Oh, Jesus. Whoa. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Not going to hit me. Uh, 14 bludgeoning damage. Okay, that's fine. Now, the blights over here. One will turn around to try to constrict Jeswaldo. Aha! The, the 12. The other will do the same since you are right up next to him with a 9. Even worse. <laughs> <laughs> One against Spanish. our bard at a five. <laughs> and Mr. Woodwode, two attacks. 14 and 25. Ooh, the 25 will hit for sure. 13 bludgeoning damage. Oof, okay. 
Ouch. Yeah, nothing I can do about that one. And that is their turn. Athelflaed. Okay. Did we get uh, another bard? <laughs> I know. Yep. Your turn to send her. <laughs> oh, no! No! <laughs> yeah, bye, thanks so much. Hashtag, no. super sorry. <laughs> JK? <laughs> This guy just tanked half this combat. I know. Yeah, he's doing really well. Yeah. I'm I know, very he's happy. Like right standing now. fully on his own. No he said, oh, Harry, he said, what have you lost? He said, what have you lost? I was almost a bard of swords. Uh, he said, what have you lost? I said, well, we've lost a tank in our druid. So he said, I'm going to be a bard. I said, okay. <laughs> but I thought I did. <laughs> I awesome. it's going to be this tanky. Uh, oh, I'm cool. trying to free my loyalty to the party as I'm being beaten to death by dark plants. <laughs> Well, I guess doing that's a my good turn. job, guys. <laughs> yeah, Ethel Vlad, you're up. No, I was hoping. Okay. Um, okay, so let me. First of all, I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to click the correct button. That will help. I'm going to turn around and fire an arrow in that Woodwoods face aiming for one of his eyes. Okay. Will be at disadvantage since the one is threatening you within five feet. That's okay. I say, come on. You could hold down the control bar. Could, yeah, yeah, my Macintosh isn't liking when I do that. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh. The open apple button. Yeah. yeah, that's not why are you not working? <laughs> Yeah. Right. Max cool. do sometimes have trouble with all of these things. My Mac is just like, well, I'd love to help you, but not. And then I'm rolling, and it's only sticking in my D and D Beyond page. Hmm. Uh, you can backslash um, if you would like to or, backslash yeah. roll. Man. You can also click the little dice on the left hand side, bring up that, and just roll. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Roll two d twenties, and then just tell me what your modifier is. My Mac has just let me down. It's all good. It's not good. D20 is... Kill it with fire. Uh, Ooh, the 18 looks good, but with four... Um, I th you have plus seven or plus nine? I'm blessed. Uh, that should be plus nine. Bless. Oh, Go ahead and roll bless, the D4. Yeah. I included everyone. <laughs> I mean, so 15, 15 total. Unfortunately, it will bring up that shield and the arrow will stick directly into it. Well, that's rude. Then I guess I'm just going to turn around and stab this guy once. Well, you, you shot it once. Right. So I get two. I get two attacks, but I don't think it's limited to. No. Uh, you. Yeah. You shot it twice. It deflected one. You hit one. So no, he. She's attacking with disadvantage because she's. Yeah, it wasn't. Right. Yes. I was having yes, issues yes, yes, with yes, it rolling. Sorry. Yeah. No. So blame go my, ahead I blame my Mac. Go ahead and roll another two d20s for your dagger attack. Two d20s, dagger attack. Can you do that? Switching from bow to dagger. I don't see. I was. I was so going over the ability, and it doesn't. Right. Hanging, uh, handling the bow, was would require two hands. Yeah. She can have a. She can have her bow in one hand and draw a dagger as part of her attack yeah. action. Okay. Um, Yay! However, she however, could not draw another it. one. Um, so she will be limited to this. So, all right. Uh, 23, Less. don't mm, have to... That's you roll a th 13 and a 10. Right. 13, Add. go ahead and add... Um, so that's plus 7. Total 20 is going to hit. Sweet. Go ahead and roll your damage. Yeah. Oh yeah, that one rolls. Now it's just working. Fine. <laughs> just All right, not for when seven more advantage. points of piercing damage. Gotcha. Would it be stars that I'm okay? It is for right now, at least. <laughs> All right, that's your multi-attack. Um, yep. You can't offhand because you got a bow in your hand, so. So that's that'll that. Bring us to Elimus. Elimus will draw three, uh, four runes into the air, and then start speaking the words. Oh, I had it just now. Hang on. Radi Tepifacta. And then from these runes, four rays will start shooting out. 
Okay. First one, we'll try it. Aim for this one. Mm, this is cast at third level. Uh, for a 17, plus with bless. Obviously, 17, I'm assuming, is hitting. Um, with bless, it will hit. That's without bless. 17 is without bless, so. Yeah, that's what I mean. With <coughs> bless, it will hit. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, 14 damage. Uh, yep. Uh, just that, that's yeah. the, okay. That's doubled. Yeah. Did that hit? Uh, kill? It. Yeah. Uh, it did not kill. Did not kill. It's getting bad. I shoot another one at it. Then I don't know why it's not letting me cut. Press it to cast again. No, nope, that's mm -hmm. the spell. Twenty-three to hit. Absolutely. Come on. There we go. Sixteen damage. Let's see. It is barely hanging on. Oh, these things are tough, okay, huh? Okay, mm -hmm. another one. We'll streak out for a twenty-one to hit. Yep, and <coughs> you cannot damage. roll low enough to not kill it. And the so. last one will head over and hit the one fighting the our uh, knightly character. Oh, natural one. Uh, of course, that's the one that goes one. <laughs> <laughs> right. You see a little flare. Woo, uh, go over, Harry. That, uh, still not purpose. sure which side this guy's on. on. Purpose. Yeah. <laughs> Better illuminated, <laughs> right? but... Uh... Well, to be honest, I was looking at that scenario and thinking a fireball <laughs> might work. Yeah. It'll catch everyone, but who cares? <laughs> it's come so far. It's coming at Aphemia Woodsman's axe. Like in the walk off. <laughs> Who is Dude. this guy? <laughs> you haven't hit anyone with it yet. It's well, dangerous to go alone. You should try hitting someone with it. I, I can't use it. I'd love to, but I can't. Um, I'm going to go for the the vine blank. Okay. Um, with my long sword attack. Oh, sorry. Can I change that last second to the wood road? I forgot he's my target of my yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, hex blades thingy, isn't he? So yeah, no waste time not hitting him. So eighteen. Eighteen is the number you need. Cool. So that's um, eleven damage with my hex blades curse. Okay. And then I'll hit him up with a another slashing flourish for an extra one d eight. Um, seven damage. Thanks. So a total of 11, 18 damage to the guy to my north, and seven damage to this guy here. Okay, that one behind you is starting to look a little rough too. Okay, and that ends my turn. Jeswaldo. Jeswaldo will attack the vine light to his left. Silver rapier. Hitting EC24. Mm -hmm. I'm going to crit fish because I'm. He's. Wait, no, he's not restrained. No. Uh, but I did 15 points of piercing damage. And you pierce it to death. All right. And I will <laughs> go back to back with Harrison. Aha! Oh, wow. Yes. <laughs> Noble fighting side by side, of course. <laughs> well, I'm not sure just well there is. It's, <laughs> I'm not sure if it's a from. <laughs> All right. Claire, you're up. Um... Alright, I'm gonna make my way over towards the road. Mm -hmm. Um. Are you doing anything with that axe? Or is it just like on the ground? <laughs> like, I kinda axe. just wanna pick it up and use it. As far as I know, this is just an axe. <laughs> yeah, he's probably dropped it on the floor, is not he? So pick it yeah. up. Okay. Give it a go. Yeah, it's on the floor, yeah. Alright. Someone Fine. use it. Can, can I pick it up and use it? <laughs> you can, yeah. Can I say okay. that I used some of my interact with object to like flip it to her? Uh, <laughs> for for flare? <laughs> I'll allow it. Hey. <laughs> you got you got your toe under it and as she runs, you yeah. kind of kick it up. Oh. Oh, okay. 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 It's an axe. Right. It's a, um, that's a tree. So it's an axe. It's going to hurt. Use, <laughs> um, it, it's going to be coming in through uh, the thing as a mace attack because I, that's just going to be the right number. Okay. But I rolled like shite with it, so with my first attack, so I'll try again. Um, I can't roll to save my life tonight. Oh my god! It's a bad. It's a not it's a good a axe. Bad yeah. It's a crap axe. It's not a good night for you. Yeah. No, I I rolled like a four out of five on that. I I just it's bad luck. That's all. 
Uh, pass it along. All right, Maris. That axe is ass. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Alimus, uh, why do you think this is a good idea? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was Maris. just a joke. It was just a joke for the warrior. <laughs> <laughs> why are you using it? We, we didn't want to have to share our food with a new guy. We were just trying to get him. <laughs> Um, so Maris will take her movement to approach this way. Um, and with that, get, so these right here, can I cross over that? Or is that a uh, From where you are, it's pretty low right there. It wouldn't require okay. any sort of check, but you Great. can get to here. Awesome. So I will go to that spot and cast Sacred Flame on, what is it? It's a wood. A wood woad. A wood woad. I will cast it on the wood woad. Got an eight as a result for its deck save. Okay. <sighs> wood woad. <laughs> wood woad. What's your damage on that? Uh, oh boy. 15. Nice. Again, it is um, now crackling from the. Um, well, no, it's not. On, this one's not on fire, so it is still regenerating, as you can see. But um, this radiant damage does seem to sear into it, though it doesn't set it on fire necessarily. Okay. Um, and then I will attempt to use my spiritual weapon to hit one of the blight that's directly in front of Jeswaldo. Your spiritual weapon was attacking this one here, I believe. Let's see how. Unfortunately... It was attacking the other woodwode. Yeah, it was up with me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be just a bit too far out of reach. You can move it closer, um, but 20 feet is going to be right. your limit for moving that. Okay, so. well then I will move it closer to kind of hover right in front of me. Yeah, got to... Well, if only we had an icon for it. Oh, because it's on the wood, wood yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll, I'll make that uh, happen on the break. <clears throat> the things will go. Two vine blights at the Jeswaldo. Uh, how's a 19 on your AC, Jeswaldo? I would, uh, it would have missed if I had that armor, but I do not. So it does hit You're me. So you are constricted. Six ah. points of bludgeoning damage. You are restrained. Cabbages. The other one, having advantage, will roll a 21. It's And deal ooh, 12 points of bludgeoning. Aye, aye, aye. Both targets are now restraining you. The Woad has two targets. One swinging an axe, which it doesn't like. Club at you at 14 to hit. Ooh, not going to hit. And one at the Bard uh, for an 18 to hit. Is in this, I would love that. Yeah. Just below. <laughs> All right. Not even bad rolls either. All right. <laughs> Athelflaed, you now have no one threatening you. You can attack like normal with your bow. Yay! I knew it would happen eventually. Okay, I am going to do my best flippy flippy Legolas onto the the large... This is like a root that's sticking up, right? Yep. You can get about five feet up there yep. without a check. So I am up there for a better vantage point. And then I'm going to finally do a real Athelflaed special with the Hail of Thorns. Hiya, level one. So that does hit everyone Where in five feet again, right? So you might want to... Why do I just want to kill everyone? It's like... <laughs> I, I'm, you know, we're gonna throw that away. You'll get, day. you'll get the chance. It's a good reminder. But. Yeah, I just get too excited. I'm sorry, team. Then I'm just gonna fire like a regular person, yeah, a regular half elf, and I will half go... elves are people too. Only some of the time. Uh, then I'm gonna go for that one, and we're gonna do two, two back to back arrows. And then I have bless you. Yeah, you, uh, you no need to bless. roll bless on dual 26s. That's why I was <laughs> like, wait. And then I stopped. Yeah, I stopped. Deeper the hits. One. Never mind. <laughs> we'll take that second arrow, but it will cause this one to fall. Okay. 
Anything else? Nope. Cool. Elimus. Now. Um. I need to check something just quickly. But so if something is a 20 foot radius, can I just catch this and that in it if it was cast here? I, obviously, I don't know how to draw. Hmm. I don't really have templates. No. Uh, why does if Roll you catch you this corner and this corner, I was like, if you barely, I'll just use this. Um, no snapping. Show to others. So if you're if your radius just caught these two corners. Yeah, that's what I want to do. Yeah. I would say yes. That's fine. He will look to his ring. And this is the last thing I can do. And he will speak to the ring and say, Ignis Fragor. And a little tiny little fireball will just come out and he'll grab it. Yeah, just just Fragor knows that. <laughs> knows those words. He dives <laughs> for cover. <laughs> yeah. And he'll just throw it so it sort of explodes here, whatever it do. Yeah. Uh, so you guys feel an immense burning sensation erupting. Doesn't quite deal damage to you, but it's DC very unpleasant. Um, I need to raise my shield towards it. I've got it. So the, the Vine Blight saved, but his half damage is going to kill it anyway. Okay. The other one didn't and is vulnerable to fire, so it's going to take 66, 66 points of damage. 66 damage. <laughs> more than enough to finish Gosh. off this last one. Goodness gracious me. And With a screeching sound, it's like almost the sound of... Um, when you boil or not boil but when you burn young wood that hasn't been firewood that hasn't been aged properly so it has the um the bubbling hissing uh sap boiling out of it you hear that sound and it increases as if it's screaming with this boiling sort of bubbling sap whistling noise before going silent and crumpling back into a scorched stump Limus will drop to his knees and it will look absolutely exhausted as Waldo turns to Harrison. <sighs> Welcome to Barovia. <clears throat> like we said, everything hurts. <laughs> Plants themselves seek our demise. But they shall not see it this day. I was I trying to say that the axe is really good against these creatures. Ah. I don't see anything special about it. <laughs> <sighs> And with that, um, this is a good place to take our break after this combat. So, Welcome back, everyone. Thanks for sticking with us. Uh, before the break, the party had battle under the Gulthias tree, an enormous gnarled black mass of wood with desiccated bodies hanging from it. Elimus had found a magical axe underneath it, and when he pulled it forth... Um, the plants around it sprung to life once again, seeming to defend the tree and attack him. The party took a lot of damage once again, but um, the new addition of Harrison um, managed to mitigate quite a bit of it and all working together with that, Elimus's fire and whatnot, the party was able to overcome once again the threat. They now rest and recuperate a bit and well, cast, it's up to you. What do you do? Can we actually take a short rest? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think that's such a bad yeah. idea. It's Not up to you. here. Not here. You think we okay. should get back that's to some Look at this tree! <laughs> <laughs> I like the tree. <laughs> I'm exhausted, excuse me for asking. But I yes, am also right. exhausted. We can, we can take ourselves to somewhere that's a little less... Why don't we get ourselves back horrible. to the vineyard and rest there for the night? That's fine. I mean, if we like get attacked is... between here and there, you can say I told you so, but I definitely think we shouldn't stay here. I'll if you'd like, I can, I can hasten your rest. I've been known to have access to such magics. Um, well, I, oh. I did want to check, was this tree something we can deal with right now or not something we can deal with right now? So, based on the check that happened earlier, you would know that you would need to completely uproot it. Um, okay. Not just chop it down, but deal with the entire root system, burn it, 
which would be possible, but very time consuming okay. and labor intensive. You also know that a specific type of magic could potentially take care of it, but um, it's not something that Maris believes she currently has okay. the ability to cast. Well, all right, then maybe down the road if we have the time for to come back here when we're a little more powerful, but I guess we can leave it for now, even though it irks me. What magics do you speak of? Uh, I can make it so that you can rest easy, even in the most dire of situations. I can make it Which so is all the time here, really. Of course, if we find any kind of safe nook or cranny, then perhaps if one of us stays awake, it would only take ten minutes to recuperate yourselves to full stamina. Sometimes. That makes sense, yeah. That's amazing. Only ten minutes? Soothed by my uh, stories, I will make sure you all get a gentle rest in ten minutes' time. Well, I love a good uh, bedtime story, so... Ferris, um... <laughs> like, okay. Maris is, like, sneaking towards a place where she can lay down. Well, I have no problem with a ten-minute rest, I suppose. But just not here, or here. All right. I don't know. Well, let's let's head back to the wine to the winery. Mm. Deliver the stone, rest up, and then we can get on our way back to Kresk with their wine. Oh, we're we're making a wine delivery, by the way. Um, it's part of a long scheme of things. Um, apparently, people get very depressed here, and wine is like the only thing that makes them happy. So makes sense. You know. So, are we take? Should we take the ten minutes here and then go back? If if what our friend here is saying, then we could recuperate. I a bit. just this tree. Uh, yes, make haste back to the vineyard. Even ten minutes in this scenario may prove fatal. Okay. Well, okay. that's vineyard. It is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I, I would like to uh, contact my horse. <laughs> I was going to say, how do we get our mounts back? Oh, watch this. <laughs> I uh, I hobbled mine down the bottom of the hill. Oh, mine yeah, responds did. to my commands from far away. <laughs> yours, yeah. is, yours is undead. Yeah. Um, check so, this out. Harrison, this heck. you <laughs> see <laughs> galloping from the up from the forest. Um, oh, that's a horse. But as it turns to weave its way up the uh, hill, you see one side of it is completely clawed away. You see that its entrails are dragging on the ground, almost like um, you, you thought at first that it was part of the saddling, like just the straps. But you yeah. think, no, that's the viscera, just kind of dragging on the ground as it gallops up. Um, oh, part of the face is um, skeletal on the side, the flesh being clawed away. If you um, imagine he's like, if you had to, if the... you had to picture a zombie horse, you would think that's a zo- that that's it. Yeah. That's <laughs> that is zombie horse right there. And um, it was one of the merits, unless my eyes are cheated by some spell. I can see it coming up the hill. I see it's good half, and I'm like, ah, a noble beast for a noble knight. What kind? Oh my! God. <laughs> <laughs> Manner of creature, have you bound to your will here? Oh, it's nothing. I'll, and y'all, yeah, like, you know, rub it behind the good ear. Um, I say, I dubbed thee today Alfalfa, and you shall be a good steed. <laughs> and get up and say, shall we find the rest of the horses? <laughs> They're probably all, like, really far away from this one. <laughs> They're gonna run from it. Mine's not Maris hobbled, mine. I go and retrieve the horses that uh, Adlimus and I hobbled far away. What are what are people's passive perceptions, by the way? 17. Mm. Again, 17? Yeah. 11. <laughs> Sorry, Liz had something to say. Yeah, what was that, Liz? Oh. Nine. Uh, my passive perception... Is 14. Um, but yeah, Maris is also wondering where her elk friend has gone. Yeah, where is Sauri right now? Is he uh, just going to walk He had to fix the weather. Sauri is still kneeling in the center where the ritual was happening, and he will say, mm, Still need to purify. <clears throat> Don't think more blights will come. No, not like this. Have to stay. Um, Maris. 
Kavaz and demands it. If you are sure. Oh, you okay if we go deal with the wine thing? I will be safe. I am primal champion. We will meet you in the You are primal champion, yeah. buddy. <laughs> you you go take the you go take the rot grape juice. Sorry for return. Okay. Sounds okay. good. <laughs> See you on the other side. Other side of what? The week. <laughs> no, no, no. So anyway. <laughs> so, no, it's so, what he would have said. It's so and true. Would have and then little tongue would have come up and looked his eyes. Yep. Like, like. <laughs> anyway, uh, so you're, you're able to get your horses. So the reason I asked, Elimus, I think you've picked up on the way that magic sort of distorts things. And as Harrison is freaking out about this, you notice that his shield, you know, his magic is oftentimes represented in the uh, emblem on there. You see that the portcullis, the bottom of it has grown, two of the spikes have grown longer and sharper. And now it looks like his the emblem on his shield almost has fangs. Whether or not you point this out to them is up to you. Hmm. That's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. So... <laughs> Yeah, and this, know. it's kind of in response to, um, you know, if you would like to educate him. But if not, that's fine. I see your uh, your shield's looking a bit toothy. Toothy. Mm. And I'll look down at it and I'll see. You you see, yeah. Actual things. Okay. Wow. And I say, um, truly, the magic of this land is pervasive to the core. That even an item that I bring with me is corrupted. I may have to leave it here once we leave this land. Thank you for telling me uh, your name again. El Elimus? Elimus. Elimus. And the axe, of course, thank you again. Your understanding that an axe might harm a wood creature is charming, if not a little naive. It's like the logic of a child, if you don't mind me saying mm. it, that an axe would deal more damage to a tree. Very Cold naive. Us, Harrison? Very naive, <laughs> you're correct. And I'll take the axe back. <laughs> he does, just I Waddle, mean, no just Waddle walks over to Claire and says, all right, now he's really starting to bug me. <laughs> yeah, do, do we all hear this? Uh, I don't think it's being particular. Yeah. It's just yeah. a common conversation. <laughs> he's uh, he's not, well, contrary to him being a bard, he can say the wrong thing sometimes. Claire, I Claire yeah. when you say hya and you kick your horse, does the foot actually like go inside? <laughs> oh, I can just tell him where to go and he'll go. With your so mind? You, do you say hya with your mind? <laughs> I suppose the intent is the same, but I'm not like thinking hya. Like I'm not saying that in my brain. That's like not a part of my internal monologue. That's too bad. Anyway, <laughs> I look to the group. Does anyone want a magical axe? Me. I'll hand it, it, to hand it to Maris. Ooh. It's only magical against plants. Are you sure? It's a magical axe all the time. It only deals extra damage against plants, but yeah. for purposes here. of overcoming okay, um, magical resistance, it does work. Hmm. Uh, there you go. It's a magical I, I axe. Kind of want it back back now, to the wizards of wine. Womp womp. Yeah. Now let's head on back to the winery. Right. Just swallow. Yeah. <laughs> it is where she takes off. Yes, I'll um, walk. It, it, without, saying, without saying it. Without saying it. Everyone takes off. <laughs> No, no. Actually, Maris has to walk with you. No, no, no. Mar Maris, I, I, you can get up on on dead horsey with me. You can, yeah, you can get no, up on the wrong horse. No, I want to make friends with Harrison. Then he oh. should go on someone else's horse. He does you, else. It's like uh, nobody has. <sighs> <laughs> okay, nobody I'm gonna rein my horse over horse. to Maris and like glare at her, as in get on my horse right now. Get on the damn horse. Maris begrudgingly swings up and gets on the horse. That's right. <laughs> Didn't we have a druid for this? Oh, I don't yeah, right? <laughs> Do you need a ride? If it's not too much to ask, yes. It's fine. And I'll give him a hand up. <laughs> Thank Just you. Don't poke too hard at it. And in, in my in my brain, not saying anything, <laughs> I think to myself, yeah. <laughs> ah, nice. Awesome. 
Just while I heard it. <laughs> so, uh, you guys head to the Wizards of Wine Winery. Um, do you give back the gem? Um, I will um, show it to um, D- uh, Davian. I think it was named Davian. Was. Mm-hmm. Davian. Um, so th- and it, this is what you were searching for, correct? Could I have studied it on the way back? Yeah, there would be enough time for you to have done that. Um, it was a very powerful magical object. Identify However, it wasn't concentration, so I still had it cast. Yeah, uh, but that you have to do that once on the object. You can't just yeah, have so, yeah, yeah, yeah. identify. Going. I mean, it's, it lasts for eleven minutes. Identify so. After the combat, I would have like held it and identified it. It was obviously the combat wasn't eleven minutes long, so <clears throat> I think you have right. to re-up it for each item. Yeah, you have to oh, do it? it. You have to identify each item. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, one object. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, I will cast, uh, cast it again. Then. And that's fine. We can the, we can find time for this to happen. You the this item is not something that you can necessarily harness. If you had a laboratory and um magical instruments and a year of study you could do amazing things with this but it's it's an, a raw innate power it's not a magical item designed for use it's like fuel like in a way artifact maybe yeah. yeah so um it's not something that you can harness at this time but you can see why the um Martikov family used it in their winery and it's sort of its intended use or its natural use in its raw unrefined state it does indeed cause their winery to flourish and grow however it can also be used to spur the growth of other entities living not living essentially so they yeah well, so my intention was to return it um, and you know noting you know we only found the one um and we didn't see any evidence of the other two. But I said um, there was only one missing. There used to be three. Oh, did he only have the one? I think I misunderstood that then. Yeah. Okay. Um, over some course, Davian will explain to you that they had three at one point. Okay. Three. This many. Three. Um, that were stolen. One, what, they were assaulted by scarecrows at one time. Um, one, they don't know exactly what happened to it. Um, when perhaps when the scarecrows assaulted, two they made off with. They think that whoever is the source of the um, whoever has conjured these sort of animated scarecrows that you guys have fought in the past is probably responsible and maybe taken the other gem. Um, Interesting. But the third one, they have no idea where it might be. I think I have a good idea with one of them, Marlin. It's right yeah. there. No. <laughs> um, well, we can try to be on the lookout for the other ones as we traipse around the countryside. Um, what do we like to steal a bottle of wine? I... Do you have to steal it? Can't you just ask for Can't it? You, like, yeah. Is I'm going really to take one, assuming it's okay. Oh, I know yeah. it's taste okay. that one procured illegally, I suppose. That's just the truth. Yeah. Um, any particular one you're looking for, Jaswaldo? Uh, I recall that there was a good, a particularly good one back way back in the city of Barovia. There was uh, several choices, and one of them was better than the others. Mm-hmm. I'll take that one. Okay. You take the what is called the Red Dragon Crush, and they like. I suggest you uh, for medicinal use. Make better of your defenses of this artifact. We have learned our lesson, though. You must understand, we've defended this for generations. The the incursions have only grown stronger. You've defended three. Unfortunately, we go, we grow weaker. You've defended three for generations. Yes. Mm -hmm. My point is, there's no need to make them feel ashamed. I'm not. Look at this place. I'm not. I'm just saying. You need to maybe recruit more people. 
This cannot fall into other people's hands. I... If you have done what you say you have done, I think... Perhaps we will be safe for a while. For a while. Enough to... Perhaps... Make amends with my brother. Bring some of them from Valaki here. You know, I if I say bro, I, I literally say brother every time. Yes, he said yeah, son. It's, it's his son. I don't know why I do it's, that. It's his every brother time, son. But. It's a special brother thing. Don't. That's disturbing. We, uh, we, we left our druid back at the place where we found this. Um, he seems very keen on cleansing this area. If you're nice to him, he might help you with your plants. He had some very interesting ideas before we left. He's a powerful entity when he wants to be. We will speak to him immediately. Um, Thank food. you. Food, food is a good way to get him to do things. Raw food. Mm -hmm. Raw yeah. food. Yeah. Okay. Things you might not even expect, like spiders. He's into spiders. Um, does the wine cart have horses for it, or do I need to like hitch up? We have two draft horses and old fowls. Okay. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I would hope that you would either bring it back or send someone back with it. We'll Certainly. we'll provide the coin if you want to hire someone to bring it uh, back. It's not but a problem. It it's you understand it's. But these large horses are somewhat hard to come by. Um, we'll make sure they get returned to you. Please, you may take you may take one, and one is well enough to pull the cart. Great. Okay. So, is there somewhere where we can rest and like kind of gather ourselves for a bit? You're welcome to stay here as long as you'd like. We'll feed you. Great. We'll stay tonight. Mm -hmm. Okay. In that case, you all can long rest before you head Yay. back to Crest. Great. <laughs> we live another day. Mm -hmm. And I get, I, uh, being bitten by straw doesn't have any special effects. He asked trepidatiously. Let me, um, <laughs> being bitten? Hmm. No. But let me just double check this. Uh, part. Um, as we're resting, I approach Maurice again. Maurice again. Have you got mm -hmm. any more of that healing you can apply to this ring? Yes. Uh, upon finishing a long rest, your hit point max is restored. Right. Well, I mean, we, that was the. Yeah. So this is the second time I've been bitten by a vampire, and you know, I'm still I'm still trying to get my complete set of of lycanthropy. I'm gonna look around to one of these were ravens and see if they'll peck me. <laughs> And I have a question about yep. the level of cure wounds. Is it just first level or? You can just do a normal healing You can upcast it word. and it. Yeah. I mean, you can. Yeah, that's another yeah. the bad question. <clears throat> but I will probably meta game and do like a short rest, get a three slot back, cast Fireball into the ring, and then have you cast a level okay. one spell into if it. You if okay. you guys are spending the rest of the afternoon Where there, we are, you will yeah. be safe to do this. You can you can do that yeah. yes okay so cool. yeah i'll just just a level and, one one yeah you know we're trying to we're trying to um move on to kresk <clears throat> but is there is there a way that i could somehow find out more about this raven lycanthropy and it might be cool to be a were raven just gonna throw that out there is that something that can be conveyed upon somebody else or do you have to be born into it? You don't have to cast them, Maurice. So, uh, oh, Liz. really? You yeah, can yeah, just, yeah. like, do you get to just, like, <clears throat> so later? So before we rest, I'd have you cast in there if you've got a slot available. And then when you rest, you, you get all your slots back. Amazing. <clears throat> um, That will be a difficult thing to talk about with them. Um, Make a persuasion check, however, with disadvantage 13 13 um they will tell you that this is a thing that is in their family 
I understand. They have always kept it so. Um, they uh, they will explain to you. I mean, they they trust you, but they will they will say it's not something they would wish upon an outsider necessarily. Oh, so it comes with bad things. Well, that's the that's what they imply that it is. Um, uh, it's just Waldo's not interested. No, thank you. No problem. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, anything else you would like to talk to these before we move back to Kresk? By the way, um, Harris, if you see a crow, mm -hmm. do not kill it. Good to know. Thank you. I didn't intend to, but... but you, you, it could happen accidentally. Make sure that it doesn't. More rules for Barovia, I see. No killing crows. And I'll write it down in my physical journal I've got with me, I guess. <laughs> Don't kill crows in Barovia. He Thank makes you, me look like you, Jeswaldo. <laughs> Thank Again, you. Um, I will, just for the for Harrison's sake and for Athelflaed, who have not been to Kresk, as you guys travel this way, now with your wagon, just clicky-clacking, in on the wagon, the, um, I guess, as well rooms. now. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, you could any like two people could fit in the wagon along with the barrels of wine that you have. Yeah, Maris definitely wants to be inside the wagon with the wine. Mm. Don't drink it. <laughs> so you guys see in front of you a gatehouse built into a twenty-foot-high stone wall, reinforced with buttresses every fifty feet or so. The wall encloses a settlement on the side of a snow-dusted mountain spur. Beyond the wall, you see tops of snow-covered pines and thin white wisps of smoke. The somber toll of, of a bell comes from a stone abbey that clings to the mountainside high above the settlement. The steady chime is inviting, a welcome change from the deathly silence and oppressive fog to which you have grown accustomed. Um... While we are making our way from the winery to Kresk, I'd like to bring Harrison and Ethelflaed up to speed a little bit about why we are here. Um, the gist of which is that we promised to bring a young woman named Irena um, from a town to the east um, called Barovia, the or village of Barovia in the larger land of Barovia. Um, to a place of safety, which we believe we will find here in Kresk. She has been attacked um, and pursued by Strahd himself. Um, and so we, we brought her here along with um, a young man named um, Viktor Velakovich, um, who was also sort of in trouble in Velaki, um, and Elimus's sister is there as well. Just looking um, at Viz's face. Yes. <laughs> Maris can't even, like, she just peeks her head out of the side of the <laughs> And they're all, um, they're already in the town. They're, yeah, so they're, okay. they're being held, um, in, not, not, like, captive, but, like, you know, they're looking at them. Um, yes while we do this errand for them to gain access to the rest of the town and to the abbey on the they top of the hill. Um, the yeah. abbey is where Soon we think they'll be safe. All right, see. I'll, um, you know, Harrison legally listens to all this and not along, considering himself up to speed on the situation. Yeah. Do you tell him everything? What have I not said that you think I might or might not have it's just, said? There's, there's interesting details. I'm just out of curiosity, Jeswaldo is like listening. Do you talk about oh. the things that we've recovered? You talk about the uh, like the meeting with the uh, the soothsayer, um, the card readings, and all that. I I said literally what I said. Okay, got it. Yeah, I said what I said. <laughs> <laughs> I heard it. Yeah, basically trying to give the short version okay. without, and like if they have specific questions, like I'm I'm not like saying this is the be all end all of everything that's happened. Like you know, if they're curious about shit, they can ask. I mean, he will be full of questions, but I don't want to. <laughs> 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 like, this is a new realm that's way far from where he's from, so it's all going to be very interesting. 
But yeah, he won't uh, he won't bore you with them just yet. Fast <laughs> and as and as and when they come. Yes. Got it. Okay. So you approach the gates and you see again the guards up in the guardhouse, just kind of peeking over the wall nervously as you approach. You hear a sound of a a small horn blows. It's not loud like a war horn, but just a small um, alarm, and you see more figures more heads appear on the wall as your cart approaches. Hey! Hey up there! Oh, <laughs> I'm Duparty! <laughs> you see <laughs> then a familiar face. The Burgomaster who you met before. The leader. Standing up. And he looks behind him and gestures. And <laughs> The gates are pulled open for you. Okay. I'll go head on in. Maybe we can do a little better job here than we did the last place. That's, that's a good idea. <laughs> Just what does it as he takes another swig? Yeah. <laughs> oh. So. This mistrouded village beyond the wall is nothing more than a scattering of humble wooden cottages along dirt roads that stretch between strands of snow-dusted pine trees. So many trees, in fact, as to constitute a forest within the walls. To the northeast, gray cliffs rise sharply, and you see a road winding up to an abbey, very easy to see from this vantage point. Walking down the stairs that lead up to the battlements, you see a powerful man with a, a cape, wearing a cape and a robe that is lined with wolf's fur. He looks strong, though his countenance is somewhat darkened, dark circles around his eyes, perpetual tiredness that seems to have overtaken him. You recognize this character as Burgomaster Dmitri Kreskov, who you met before. He's definitely as... going to die if he looks like Sean Bean. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> you have done my village a great service. And as Burgomaster, I now pronounce you friends of this town. Having done this favor, I cannot deny you entrance. You are welcome here among my people. Thank As you. you hear the gates <laughs> rash shut behind you. Once these wine bottles are emptied, can you see it that this car and the horse return to its owner? We can thank you. make that happen, yes. Say so thank you but before you finish There's... <laughs> There's, by the way, this was quite unusual, but one of your, one of your friends left and, and then you see Irina sort of run forward. She's clutching her cloak around her and she says, I don't, I don't know what happened. It was in the night. And, uh, 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 Marie, she, she left. I know. She's with Strahd. What? He How said you... that he had his sister. Well, no, I thought that was. I thought he was talking him? about the other one. Me too. <laughs> I found this folded on her bed. She. And she w looks. She holds forward a sort of a packet, what looks to be a set of armor, studded leather armor. Simple, but very, very well made. And on top of it is a note. I didn't. I. I didn't dare to open this unless it, um, in case it's trapped or something like that, isn't that? She looks to you, Elimus, and says, "Isn't that right? Something. I mean, did I do the right thing? You did the right thing. It's all right, Arena. And I'll uh, 
sort of like uh, move my hands over it and say prosita desetem desetemnum and just like he's dispelling a, dispelling a spell or something but mm -hmm. it's only a minor illusion <laughs> but not actually doing it no it's, it's, it's a minor it's a minor <laughs> illusion go ahead and make a deception check with advantage there okay? <laughs> oh, oh. Mm -mm. why is it not oh hang on uh, the placebo oh. yes <laughs> <laughs> i don't know why i didn't roll minor illusions but... gonna help you 18. out a bunch there she will arena will kind of nod that's because I wasn't clicked oh. on the actual thing. I. Well, she was. Just... She had a really good idea. She was using the armor to disguise herself as me. While I slept, she was guarding me. She was protecting me, you see. And then mm. just I woke up and she was gone. I heard the guards talking. They said that she she requested they be opened, that she leave, and there was a man there on a horse, an elf with dark hair. She said, they said, and well, rode off. They said she had horns, and a tail. She was, she was, she was no evil creature. Uh, I knew her. That's not the way she looked. Can I determine I, what that would be? I don't be? understand. I'm... If she seems distressed, I want to sort of reach out and try to comfort her. Okay. Go ahead and make yeah. a persuasion check. Also, Maris had wanted to go off and just put an arm around her. Oh. Mm. Oh. Um, and who are, who are these people? She will look towards the two of you. She will calm a bit and then yeah. say this. Looking towards Alpha Flad and Harrison. Harrison, you see a striking woman before you. She is clothed in furs and a nice, um, and what seems to be a dress, but over that she wears a finely crafted breastplate. She, as she um, addresses you, while suspicious, you see there is courtesy there, um, clearly born of some type of nobility not the way you would necessarily expect but maybe the way a lesser house there's she's certainly been trained in court etiquette at yeah, least quaint. somewhat yeah you know, yeah quaint. Quaint. Very, yeah. very cute you know kind of very funny it's uh, and it's, it's not like she's trying to do you any uh like it's not like she feels like she owes you anything it's instinctual it's the way that she's been raised is to address people this way but you recognize that um you know that uh that that way of that that demeanor as as such uh, i guess harrison will introduce himself with typical gallantry and say something like um i understand you're on the run from rather a serious evil irena but mark it upon my honor that i shall not let any harm come to you i too seek the demise of this strad von zarevich so that I may be free from this land. I will right the wrong that has been done to you. And this is, um, I just brought up in the, uh, um, what she looks like. Um, and and she will say, You flatter me, sir, with your courtesy. Uh, may our quest for a greater good always be successful. My new friends here tell me that it's impossible to charter a stagecoach to Baldur's Gate from here. So it's not worth asking you if you know anything about that. Not that I would abandon your plight, just if, if the option's there, I would like to perhaps get back to Baldur's Gate. Baldur's Gate? Oh, That's God. <laughs> yeah, as soon as I see her reaction, I just pinch my name. Uh... Can, we, can we look at the letter, please? Yeah. yeah. Um, obviously, he's more concerned about the way that they uh, described what she looked like. So he's going to read the letter. Okay. He's thinking that she might have used some magic to make herself look different. He knows his sister quite well. This is the letter. 
My friends. Whoever would like to read it may do know so. Know that it is I. It is penned exquisitely. Know that it is I that have brought you to this land, my home, and know that I alone can release you from it. I bid you dine at my castle so that we can meet in civilized surroundings. Your passage here will be a safe one. I await your arrival. Your host, Strahd von Zarevich. Well, so, I find it perfectly courteous. What could oh, be courteous, sure. <laughs> but <laughs> if you've seen him run around and see all the sh all that he has wrought upon the people that are here, and then turns around and invites you to dinner? Well, all you have to do is mm -hmm. replace the first sentence with, you are my prisoner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That tells you all you need to know. So, Marie is gone. At least she left the armor. He picks it up and wanders off. You see um, a woman in a, a sort of a, a fine dress, well constructed. It's not as fancy as any that you've seen in Velaki or whatever. She's about middle aged, similar age to the Burgomaster. Come up and whisper something in his ear. You see, um, this is what she looks like. And they speak for a moment, and he answers her. And you see her then hurrying to one of the nearby houses, accompanied by a few other women. Can you move those icons to the middle of the screen? Mm -hmm. just, of so, just so people in the stream can see them. Yep. Perfect. Is everything all right, Broker Master? <clears throat> yes. There is, um, well, a woman is giving birth today. Oh. So we are all understandably on edge. Why? On edge. Is there a problem with oh. the birth or? Well, it's always a chance, you know, when a child is born. You never know until it happens. Uh, a chance of what? Them not being... Whether they will have a soul. Yeah. Oh, I see. All beings are born with a soul. To judge a child, to not it's have not one, here. is cruel. Ah, Barovian magic a... again, yeah. I see. Yeah, <laughs> the rules are a little different here. You'll find every now and then people who seem to just function alive what will happen? not alive what will happen Baron if it has no soul also, but this sounds more serious what will happen if it has no soul will it just will it be born dead no yeah. oh it's they they live their lives but they end up being people in the first time not as we understand they go about like a shell of those of us who understand you aren't that makes a lot more explain. sense now thank you all right well we should probably get up to the abbey the abbey why we're here right is there a problem no uh, it's someone who it's like check that <laughs> yeah I know sure. right <laughs> yeah I was like allow me with my um super duper insight yeah, anyone who would like to do so may <laughs> but um I'm, I never really Oh, I have plus seven. Yeah, I rolled a fucking ten. <laughs> and with plus seven, twelve. <laughs> oh, bad. Got twenty-seven. Nice. <laughs> um. <laughs> Harrison, you know that. Uh, you certainly know that. Um, he shows fear and um, surprise. And sort of shock that you would want to that you, that the abbey is why you've come here. Fear the abbey. What harm can come from basic worship? Well, we. You understand? We we don't go there. None of us do. It's forbidden. There are strange sounds. 
that echo down in the night. The abbot himself is... Well, he kind of looks around. I'll lean in. He arrived well before my father. And the few times we've seen him, he hasn't walked among us in some time, but when, when I saw him last, he looked exactly as I remembered him when I saw him as a boy. He hasn't aged a day. And some of the villagers think that it is the lord of this land himself that dwells there. Seems mm. unlikely we've encountered Strahd out and about. You've what? I... <laughs> he kind of looks over. You hear a woman's cry coming from the village that the wife entered into. It I seems as whatever birth is happening is coming quickly. When, I, says, yeah, uh, when I hear that, I say... Maurice, while these deal with them, why don't you come with me and witness the birth? Maybe, maybe whisper us a prayer for this babe. Yeah. So do they go into the house? Uh, he does not. Is that allowed? But he is distracted and he walk, goes in that direction. And when he is sort of leaving, he will say, if that... If that is the case, I ask you finish whatever business you have and leave here quickly. I will not force you out, but we do not harbor friends, Drod's friends. Never. Oh. But we also make it a point not to abate his enemies. You must understand. Let me at the very least assure you that we are no friends of Strahd. I, I'm sure from what you've said, but do you understand? I can. For these people. We can, we have business that must be done here, but for the sake of you and your town, we will do it with haste. He gives you a curt bow and turns around to leave. Elimus, you will not be allowed into. I don't intend to go in. I, I'm assuming it's some sort of like, uh, you know, like the doors that have. They've got the uh, thing. I just move the door out of the way or the whatever's stopping it and allow Maurice in. And I just stand outside. I say, okay. Maybe help the child. I'll do what I can. Um, a couple of the um, um, people attending. In the near the house, will look to you, Maris. Are you, are you a priestess? Uh, yes, I am from the temple that worships Saloon. Not a priestess. Sal I'm a cleric. Saloon? <laughs> Who? Yeah, the the night mother, I think you call her. They their eyes widen a bit and say, "Um, please, we don't want." The wrath of the night, mother, please. She... Oh no, 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 no! I'm, I'm trying to deliver healing and strength to the child. I don't want to harm anybody. Okay. I just want to say a prayer over the child for its soul. They kind of back away and part and allow you to enter. Okay. I go in. And there you see the scene, a mother, there are, she has sweated through the bed sheets. Um, she is obviously with child and um, writhing on the bed with the help of some other women of the village. What do you do? Um, is she healthy? Is she- make, make a medicine check. Okay. I knock on the door. Um, Eight. they will, the, the door is open, um, different women from the villages are coming and going, but they will look at you and say, what can I want, stranger? Can I spend five seconds with the mother-to-be? They kind of look you up and down. What? Why? Who are you? 
Just a traveler. Alimus, what is it that you're actually trying to do? Here? Sorry, we. Are you with us? This I... is. This is not appropriate. I just wish, wish to whisper one thing. To help the child into this world. You can make a persuasion check, but you must understand this is a very high DC. With what you have said, this is very suspect. You're very creepy right now. <laughs> um, also, I just put this happening in a modern hospital ward. <laughs> I know. That should be whispering um, to the mother's ear. 16? Who are you, traveler? They will look at and shake their heads and say, No, traveler, I do what you must and you're welcome in our village but this is I will not have soothsayers or peddlers here no looking up at your robes and your things um, and they do close the door on you Maris the woman and actually most of the people in this village seem to be hearty folk um, the woman is a strong of a strong build um, she looks healthy, well-fed, and though she is in an immense amount of pain, from what you can tell, the natural cycle of birth is taking place as you would expect. Um, she looks to be doing well. Okay. Um, is there a sort of spell that I can cast on the child? Or, I mean, because it seems like they would all just dissipate after a certain amount of time anyway. You can make a, um, let's see. If you would like, as things are happening, you could attempt, if you would like to cast Bless on the mother. Yeah. I would also ask for a religion check with okay. advantage, should you choose to expend that spell slot. I will do that. I was going to cast Protection from Evil. <laughs> on, on the mother. Uh, I don't have that well, prepared. If you want to help people, then how about you present it in a way that doesn't put people off? You wasn't there. Alimus <laughs> is creepy, alright? <laughs> <laughs> he's not, but he's just doesn't know how to speak uh, to people properly. 18 is pretty good. Um, as the... Um, you are able to find yourself in prayer and the moment comes you can tell from the breathing and everything of the mother when the child is about to be delivered that you allow this blessed spell to be cast and you hear her cry out a greater pain this time and then you hear the sounds gasping and such as a child is brought out, covered in cloths, and given to her, given to the mother. Though it is silent, and people are rightfully looking about, the child is breathing, you can see, clearly, moving, flailing, but not crying. And <laughs> you see the woman that you were ta that was talking to the burgomaster. Um, he seems to have spoken to her about everything, and she says, ah, "Very sad. The child has no." And a sound cuts through the room. Yeah! Yeah! Oh, oh my God! <laughs> yeah! That's a high. And oh. It's a the it's a peacock. The feeling of relief <laughs> is palpable as this baby begins to cry. Mm. And she says soul under her breath. Yay. Maris looks You are still a, so you are still praised. a stranger in this room. Yeah. As the women <laughs> gather around and she recognizes them. No one pays you much mind for what you have done, but you feel you have done an extraordinarily good deed. Maris slips out and tells Alimus that the baby has a soul, so... I can bloody hear it. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
in the vein of things that I have taken on as my responsibility. Um, has Victor not burned anything down yet? Uh, no, he will <laughs> not really understand exactly what has happened okay. um, to uh, Marie, but he is there. He is okay. safe. Check in and make sure that he's okay and that he's not yep. casting spells when he's not supposed to. He's good. Okay. So, what from here, what is everyone doing? This is a little overview of the town of Kresk, should you wish to see it. I think Ooh. I can. I think, is this visible to you? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Up on the top, you can see the abbey up a okay, winding switchback. This is about a thousand feet up from where you are. It's quite high, perched up on the mountaintop there. There is also, um, as you kind of look around, what seems to be a nice little pool, a small lake, crystal clear water with a gazebo near it. A gazebo. Mm -hmm. Gazebo. They slay it. <laughs> Not um. funny. Um, Jiswaldo has wandered off, so we'll do that like whatever you want. Uh, where did the burgomaster end up, by the way? Uh, he went to stand outside the house to listen to see what happens. Um, by the way, this was some stuff that everyone else was doing. Jiswaldo, what are you doing when you wander off? I will find a place to stash my sword, and I'm going to find a group of guards. Okay. So how does it feel to be completely useless pieces of trash? What the fuck? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Excuse me? I mean, you know, you, you have your job. You walk along the sides of the wall and you look very impressive and you keep everybody out. But when someone comes in and steals someone right under your noses, does that make you realize how completely and totally useless you are? Uh, or do you just sort of say, oh, well, that's just one of those things? I'm... Are you talking about the other night? Oh, the she, other night? I'm sure it's happened multiple times. She woke She woke up the on-duty guards and asked to be let out. Well, that was she demanded very stupid to be of let them. out. They should not have let her. We aren't holding prisoners here. I... We, look, I'm just a carpenter. Today's just my day to watch the wall. Is there anybody here who actually has any experience being a guard? I Maybe have someone experience. who has a spine? Look, I don't know what you're getting at, but I don't like the way you're talking to me right now. Well, why don't you do something about it? Are you what are you what are you trying to do here? Look, can you just go on your way? I don't know who you are. I don't... If the Burgomaster says you're fine, you're fine. But just get out of here, okay? I've got to watch. To, I've got to... I need to watch. And he looks out towards the uh, snowscape outside the walls. But there's wine, at least, I suppose. Nobody? Really? No one is taking offense. They look at you and look at each other and just kind of shake their heads and shrug. <laughs> as well, it wanders off some more. Eventually <laughs> recovers his weapons and rejoins the crew. Only now, He's wearing nothing in particular. Never mind. I was like, yeah. nothing again? I was like, <laughs> It's cold out as well. Yeah, if you wanted to get arrested, <laughs> you could have just shown yourself naked again. Exactly. <laughs> uh, I we guess... had a very in-depth demonstration of this armor the last time we had it on. Yeah. Well, he's I not, mean... he's not, he, I have not used the, the glamour to do anything so, with it. it just while you get it. You get a sense you could potentially provoke a fight with more prodding, but these guards are not 
guards who enjoy fighting. These are people who take their turns watching the wall and would rather nothing happen at all because then they've gotten through another day standing on the wall. So it is... He was in the mood for it until it was just so... It was like, wow, these, this really sucks. So he's, <laughs> he's not in the mood anymore. He's a little depressed. Got it. Uh, where... Oh, go ahead, Harry. I say Harrison's going to find a small corner. There is a tavern. I'm not sure if there will be in a little, little place like this. Um, just to work on his bardic skill, which is his poetry. And his book of poems. Okay. So, the Burgomaster was standing outside the door, correct? Yeah. Before? Um... I want to approach him when he seems to not be busy. Okay. Um, this might be a little bit forward of me, but, and I don't mean at all to question your power and status as Virgo Master. Um, you seem for to put it simply, under an immense amount of stress, and I'm sort of curious as to why, other than sort of the general stressfulness of this land. There's something else going on here. Go ahead and make a persuasion check. And just while she's doing that, I'm looking at this map, DM. Do the walls actually not extend all the way around up to the abbey? It's that's more artistic. They okay. They extend to the say. edges of the mountains, so Alrighty. it is it is sheer. It's almost cliff face that they extend okay. to. So they gave up when they saw Stride had a flying horse. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's the point of finishing. Yeah. The wall. So these yeah. little these little black arrows are basically show the elevation. So they butt okay. up until what would be sort of almost sheer rock. Um, okay. Uh, really he will look to you and say, "I'm gonna help out to the side too. Yes, come on." Let us help you and give her advantage. Okay. Nice. Go ahead. Never mind. Ha. I'm rolling like crap today. <laughs> well, with a 13, he is not in a particularly good place. You can tell and he will say. You are right. I am the lord of this place. And how my family has kept it safe for generations. But I think that will come to an end soon. Why? Our last son died a week ago. So you will forgive me for being distant. I'm so sorry. Natural death? A sickness. Something that's around the town, or was it just him? No. Just a fever that overtook him. He was not the strongest of boys, but he was no runt. So I recognize this, obviously. We've counted uh, a fever before, haven't we? So didn't someone else die of a fever? Arabella's mother. Mm. Irina's mother, I think they or said. Or Irina's mother? Or, not Irina's, no. Um, uh, Arabel. Yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. The Vistani. Yeah. Does it sound the same? The young girl. No, no. No, I wouldn't have. I thought we managed to... Because I, I know I did some sort of checks or something to work out what it was and they ended up sort of describing it as something that's different from where it was natural from. yeah yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so what happens now who takes over your place when time comes i don't know we are discussing it if there's anything that we can do to ease your burden don't hesitate to ask. I know we're new and that you don't likely fully trust us and I grant you that that's fair. Um, but if 
we can help in a way that you are comfortable with, say the word. Thank you. You know where I came from? Maintaining order and the line of succession was about the most importance. We will that not level, be able to do so. I and I will probably at our age. Work. Well, I don't know. You're still. <sighs> Never mind. You wouldn't understand. Well, <laughs> we have two options. We've got a trap, and we've got the abbey. I'm worried about this abbey, especially as oh. we've come all this way. To drop off. Yeah. So let's go. Let's just deal with whatever the hell is up there and get it done with. And I'll see from down here if this abbey is dedicated. Off. Sorry, I interrupted. Oh, you're fine. Yeah, I guess. It seems like if the abbey is dedicated to a certain god of any kind. You, your friends, know it. Um, it's been called to them and thus to you as okay. the Abbey of St. Markovia. St. Markovia. Is that a saint's name I recognize? Uh, go ahead and make a religion check. I'm quite good at this. Well, I say that before I never really roll though. Um, it's 10. No, I'm okay. With a 10. <laughs> No, it's not mm -hmm. a. That's not a hagiography that you are um, familiar with. Hmm. What a word! So did oh, you right. just make that up? No, it's that... a. That's a. That's the word for the uh, sort of canonical you account said, that's of another one. life. It's that's, an that's English words. word, what? Londoner. <laughs> <laughs> you you all know the English the language. For tonight? Like, what ain't it? Not right. mean. <laughs> All right. I'm so you guys towards the Abbey path. Yeah. Do you, you yeah. and again you look uh are you bringing any of your counterparts no. to your uh sort of No. Okay. We're not taking that. Yeah. You see there's a beautiful you can see the we, we light did, reflecting off the Victor? beautiful pool below. We're not bringing Victor. Victor's to After the all Victor. we went through. We're not bringing this powerful mage. Fine. Go find Victor. I think, Claire, you should go get Victor. I literally just said that I'll go find Victor. Oh, I thought you said someone else should go. <laughs> I go find Victor. You're bringing Victor <laughs> Velakovich. All right. Can't believe I'm saying this, but yes, we're bringing Victor Velakovich. All right. Yes. Because Jez Waldo has you a You want a powerful mage with you. Since it's you... <laughs> Since it's you asking Claire, he will gladly accompany you. All right. You need protection. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And that is why we are bringing Victor. <laughs> oh my God! I'm <laughs> Victor Velagovic. If he dies, I'm gonna be so mad. I won't. <laughs> you guys ascend a road that climbs from the village above the mist to a wide ledge on which the abbey is perched a light dusting of snow covers the trees and the rocky earth the gravel road passes between two small stone outbuildings to either side of which stretches a five foot high three foot thick wall of jumbled stones held together with mortar blocking the road are iron gates attached to the outbuildings by rusty hinges. They appear to be unlocked. Viewed through the gates, the stone abbey stands quiet. Its two wings are joined by a 15 foot high curtain wall. A belfry, a belfry protrudes from the rooftop of the closer north wing, which also sports a chimney billowing gray smoke. I mean, can you imagine living in a city or a town where you had a thing like this? And you just never went up there? That does seem a little odd. 
Are we prepared if this is Strahd von Zarevich? No. So, here we go. So okay. given the fact that he explicitly invited us to dinner, it seems unlikely that he would do that That's and then fair. just be here. Yeah. There are many magics which extends one's life. Yeah. Or he could just be an elf. Hmm. If he is an elf, that is an exceptionally foolish burgomaster that we've encountered. To suspect him of being Strahd, but purely having elven years. <laughs> I suspect there's more going on here. There always is. Undead. Elves are strange here too, you'll find out, by the way. Thank you. Oh, good. <laughs> um, you, as you approach the gates, you hear a voice calling out. You're about to walk. Are, are you walking through the gates? In mm -hmm. fact, yes. mm -hmm. yeah. As you, they're they're open, and as you walk out, you're, uh, 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 who, uh, who's there? Who's there? Who is it? I am Jesualdo Tocarembo La Tomba del Fuego Santa Maria Zacateca de Hotel de Cruz de la Rosa, and my friends and I are here to see the abbot. <laughs> You're not so bad. But I'm, I'm out of Bellevue. And my, my name's way better than yours. <laughs> Sorry. What I'm prettier too. Otto Bellevue. Otto Bellevue. Okay. <clears throat> and you hear, careful, Otto. I, I we love Otto Bellevue. We shouldn't necessarily trust these people. Ah, what are you talking about? Talking They've got about? nothing compared to me, and I'm the best guard. I saw him coming too. And you see coming around the corner, <laughs> this creature or this. Person. Yikes! Oh, oh my gosh! Wait, 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 wait! No! Oh. What? Oh. oh, that's a lot. And accompanying him, I love it. This woman. Oh, oh my gosh! What happened? The first one, <laughs> the more um, outspoken <laughs> one. What are you talking about? They looks like a beardless dwarf normal. with patches of donkey flesh covering his face and body. He has one human ear and one wolf's ear and a protruding wolf's snout and fangs. His arms and hands are human, but his feet and legs are leonine and he has a donkey's tail. <laughs> he la he looks at you and um, kind of puffs up his chest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a guard! And the other one slinks, slinks forward. She is about four feet, seven inches tall. The left side of her face is covered with lizard scales, the right with tufts of gray wolf fur. Between these tufts is a bit of pale human skin. One of her eyes is feline, and her fingers and hands resemble cat's paws, but with opposable thumbs. This is some island of Dr. Moreau shit here. <laughs> What manner of abominations are you? You've come for me, haven't you? No. You've come for me. Uh, no, 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 the no. Woman says he makes a very bad first impression. Yeah. And he has no mind. I do. Mm. <laughs> we're, here oh. the, uh, we're here to see the abbot. Is he it? Oh, for the abbot. Yeah, <laughs> that's. That's fine. We're supposed to let <coughs> them in. Just Great. stay away from me, okay? The one Not their says, problem. And they Not back the away and usher you in to the abbey. Feelings mutual. Gosh, Maris is so horrified. That's okay. God, I wants hate to to the <laughs> She wants to befriend them. Too. You know what? I'm actually all right with this because... Everything that we've seen that looks okay on the outside has been horrible on the inside. Of course, so there have been some things that the look. Opposite. There's some things that look terrible on the outside, which have also been terrible on the inside. Yeah, they can't help how they look. Maybe they're really great. Maybe they could help how they looked, and it's some sort of curse or punishment. Okay. Yeah. Yes, personal grooming does go a long way, and they seem to. Have but I don't know that it goes that far. <laughs> anyway. They allow you in to the main area of the abbey. So there's an outer wall that is really just sort of like a like a field fence, you know, stacked stones about five feet high, sealed with mortar. You guys could all easily just clam clamber over it. The in the 
the inner part of the abbey is more fortified. And there is a main door which they open for you. Um, above this door, these double doors leading into sort of the battlements, there is a plaque and it says Saint Markovia. May her light cure all illness. You see a few guards perched at the top, unmoving, and as you get closer, you can easily tell all of you with your passive perceptions that these are just wooden placards made to look like guards. As you get closer, though, there is sound all over or to the north area, jittering, chattering, sounds of chaos many voices dozens of voices though soft the two unlock this main door for you and lead you in one of the first things you see is a courtyard the thick fog here swirls around as if trying to escape from the walls the courtyard is surrounded by a 15 foot high curtain wall which you've just passed through wooden doors to the north lead to the abbey's two wings or north and east, sorry. There's a door to the north, a door to the east. In the center of the courtyard is a stone well fitted with an iron winch to which a rope and bucket are attached. Along the perimeter, tucked under the overhanging wall, are several stone sheds with padlocked wooden doors, as well as three shallow alcoves that contain wooden troughs. The two wooden posts pounded into the rocky earth have iron rings bound to them, and chained to one of them is a short humanoid with bat wings and spider mandibles. The quiet is shattered by a horrible scream as she looks at you. The feeling is mutual. <laughs> and you see this creature with spider mandibles just backing up towards the well, or to the post. And then it tries to fly out away from you. And then king, the chain hits. <laughs> Her bat wings flap and she falls to the ground. And then kind of hides behind this singular pole. As if looking away, trying to hide behind this pole from you. Ah, don't take it personally. She's scared of everything. You can't be as pretty as me, you know. <laughs> there anything we can do to put her at ease? No. Um, Abs, leave as soon as possible. Nah, I'll yeah. feed her in a bit. It'll be fine. Abbott's through there! How many Barovia. people live here? <laughs> oh, it's hard to tell. So uh, I'm Oh, I'm asking Otto. Oh, um... <laughs> he kind of, like, starts looking at his fingers and, um... The other one that has been accompanying you, but from a bit behind, the one with the more, the female with the the cat-like and scaled features. Why do you want to know, huh? Why do you want to know how many people live here, huh? I'm curious. Yeah, why are you curious? What do you want to know for? Why do you need that? Why do you need that information? When was the last time you left this abbot, creature? We never leave. Why would Lee leave? He's helping us. That wasn't the question. When was the last time? Why do you want to know that? Why would you need that kind of information? Huh? What are you trying to do? I'm trying to use my intelligence. Intelligence! <laughs> uh, he thinks he's intelligent. Well, here's a question. What is your name? Mr. Donkey Fellow. Otto! And what is your name, Lizard Lady? She looks and narrow her, narrows her eyes. Siegfried. Ha, ah, and the bat girl over there? What is her name? That is... Mishka. Mishka. Very good. Now, we have all introduced ourselves, and perhaps we can have a foundation of... Uh, at least cordial respect. I thought you were here to see the abbot, huh? We are. Well, yes, but if we're going to encounter more people, we should probably... We're showing you to the abbot. He's right in that door. I still want to know I'm how right. long you've okay, been well, here. Okay, we're going to the abbot. Okay, fine. Let's just go see the abbot. 
When was the last time you left this place? Answer my question. I don't leave. I don't leave sometimes. Ah, yeah. I went and got some stuff from the village the other week. I think. <laughs> I said the abbot's behind that door. Do I get the sense that there's anything not so copacetic going on with this? Make an insight check. Because they seem off. They seem like both really suspicious of us yeah. and also very eager to let us in. <laughs> 24. Um, actually, everything seems fine. It seems yeah. like he seems completely honest. I look at I them mean, both. with a face like that. Yeah. Yeah. I look at them both and I say, uh, if you're leading us into a trap, I will turn you both into ro to rodents. Do you understand? <gasps> <gasps> 20 in a deception. <laughs> That's not mm. a, an insult that affects them so badly, it looks like. <laughs> Maybe they kind of... Don't, don't say that know. out loud. <laughs> the, the, uh, they dart their... The eyes dart back and forth. And then okay. I'll feed you to the cats. Jesus, Ellens. I mean, I'm going to say Jesus. <laughs> Gods, Ellens. Gods. <laughs> they kind of back away towards their guard post. Again. Can you really do that, Elias? Of course I can. That would be really coming handy several times in the last few days. I was just... Oh, sorry. Was the fire not enough? It was so very effective, just... but it was not as effective as turning something into a rodent. Since they were not necessarily forthcoming with information, just looking around that, like, does it seem like a lot... I mean, like, there are a lot of voices coming from somewhere to the north of us, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. How far off is that from where we are right this second? So the, you were led into a courtyard that's not terribly big, maybe 50 feet across. Okay. And on one side, there are two wings mm -hmm. that separate separated by this courtyard. To the north is what looks to be a long structure, barracks-like, that you hear all these voices coming from. To the other end is a more chapel-like looking building where they're like, go in there, that's where the abbot is. Are those voices coming from people hmm, that are um, interesting like you all are? You mean beautiful? <laughs> yes, yes, that is exactly what I mean. Not as much as me, but of yeah. course not, of course not. <laughs> Why are you all here? We live here. You said the abbot was helping you. What's he helping you with? You ask a lot of questions. Why do you keep asking questions, huh? What do you want to know? Why do you keep, Why you keep asking, asking questions? questions back? Because that's my job. I'm guarding. Well, well here's a question. You're supposed to come here and see the abbot. We're supposed to let those people through. I don't know what you're trying to do right now. What, what am I supposed to think? What Have you ever been anywhere where they didn't ask questions about you? <laughs> no, I don't go anywhere. That's why I stay here. Oh, well, that explains a lot. Okay. <laughs> Should we go I think see you need abbot? to go in right now. <laughs> Please, let us go and meet the abbot. Fine, we'll go and meet the abbot. I just love that the Zeke freak said, like, stay away from me. It's obviously following us, though. <laughs> yeah, I stop. No, she that. starts to... They, they had okay. started to leave when you said ah, that right. and go back to their guard position. Um, <laughs> and it's not so bad. Maybe they come here for, like, a sanctuary or something. This... This bizarre environment shifts a bit as you approach the chapel building where from which uh, gentle music trickles down from above played on a single stringed instrument by some unseen master it's totally i love dr as you open in here the ground floor is one large 50 foot square room with large arched leaded glass windows a cauldron sits on an oak rack above a fire in a hearth while above the fireplace mantle hangs a golden disc engraved with the symbol of the sun. In one corner, a wooden staircase climbs to the upper level, while in another corner, a stone staircase descends into darkness. Several chairs surround a wooden table that stretches nearly the length of the room. Wooden dishware and gold candelabras are neatly on the table, standing behind which is a young woman with alabaster skin dressed in a torn and soiled red gown. Her auburn hair is neatly bundled so as not to touch her soft shoulders. 
She seems lost in her own thoughts. A handsome young man in a brown monk's robe gently takes the woman by the hand. A painted wooden holy symbol that depicts a sun hangs from a chain around his neck. He moves with the grace of a saint. And I will bring up a picture of him. Wow. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> Harris swoons. <laughs> well, anyone's going to look good with the company he keeps. Come on. Ah, welcome. Welcome to you all. Please. Come in, be my guest. Vasilka, won't you show our guests a bow? Won't you bow for them, Vasilka? And you see the woman in the dress kind of make a very awkward bow. <laughs> That's pretty bow good. We're return. getting there. Just Waldo does a very elaborate Afghanian bow. Ah. Please, are you all thirsty? Are you hungry? Nope. Are you the abbot? No, thank you. <laughs> yes, I am the abbot. Goodness sake, why does nobody introduce themselves? Can I use divine I, sense? I was going to say, I give, uh, yeah, <laughs> I give I Claire a nudge. Yeah, <clears throat> sure. I, I'm ahead of you. Um, Vasilka, won't you go and fetch our guests a bit of wine? Vasilka? Nod, Vasilka. And kind of awkwardly walks down or off towards the downward staircase. Please come in. Won't you all sit? So I'll go approach this table and sit and reach out okay. to see if I can sense anything. Sure. Go ahead and uh, make that. What do you? What is that sense? tell you exactly so remind it, me i uh, i can sense um nah, the location of any celestial fiend or undead within 60 feet um and i know the type of whose presence they sense also okay. anything that is consecrated or desecrated okay he as you extend this presence his eyes shoot to you and he smiles Nothing to fear here, my child. Please, have a seat, eat, drink. You're safe here. And you sense the presence of a powerful celestial. I'll sit. Mira sits as well. I will sit and I will eat. I, I give, I look up at Linus and give him a short nod aren't celestials meant to be the good guys not necessarily so far he hasn't done anything bad um just i would keep is it all right if i keep introducing myself everybody would yeah, yeah no, we love nobody it. ever no, it's fine. It's okay totally fine. I, I am as oh, rolls his eyes every time you do it but and i do the whole yeah, spiel yeah. i just sort of and uh, this is a limus and, and i introduce everybody shaking my head as i do it's wonderful to have you all here now vasilko should be back for shortly with some wine and some food to nourish you now might we have the honor of your name? I am the abbot. Your the real abbot. name. <laughs> the abbot is who I am. It's then like the this doctor. is the mage. <laughs> yeah, he's just yeah. the doctor. <laughs> yeah. Um, no. I am happy to host you all here. I'm so glad you've come. Why have you come to the Abbey of St. Markovia? Before we answer that question, I'm hoping you can answer one of mine, which is... You're awfully clear, uh, awfully quiet. Elena. Sorry. Um, before we answer that question, I'm hoping you can answer one of mine. What kind of place exactly are you running here? 
This is a place of healing. A place of sanctuary. Yet no one comes here. That actually makes a lot of sense. This is a place for the most downtrodden, the most beleaguered, to come and find healing and restoration. A place where they can exist for who they are. Which is what? You've seen. I've seen some. How they got that way, I have no idea. If what you say is that true, way. 99% of this Barovia would be living here. Perhaps. What does it tell you that they would stay out there with everything that exists instead of being within these walls with these creatures? What does that say about your judgment, Alimus? No, he did say the most are downtrodden. Mm -hmm. There no. is one that is caged in the courtyard, Abbot. Would you keep them here against their will also? Perhaps if she needs it. She grew wings after all. But should she fly away, she would be prey to something awful, surely. She was just skittish. She probably thought you were here to kill her. She thinks that about everyone that comes that she doesn't recognize. How'd she get like that? Same as the rest. Which is how? It's what they wanted. By who? What made them that way? Well, years of magical transformations, I'm... So I understand. Is he telling the truth? Go ahead and make an insight check. Clearly telling the truth. <clears throat> now, that is who... These are my charges. I take care of them. I clothe them, feed them, tend to their well-being. So why have you all come here? I think you owe me a response by now, Paladin. Um, if oh, Vasilka, Claire is visibly please. uncomfortable, by the way, yeah. with everything that is here. And this woman um, comes forward, just staring and awkwardly carrying, as if it's all she can do to not spill the bottles of wine on the tray she's carrying. And she kind of sets them at the end of the table near the abbot. Very good, Vasilka. Much better than last time. Won't you bow again for our guests, Vasilka? And she does a very awkward, almost robotic bow in this soiled red dress. Getting so much better. You're so beautiful, Vasilka. Uh... Go stand in the corner now, <laughs> in case we need anything else. And this woman walks woman. over that way. What is the... Is that yeah. Oh, it's okay. Maris would like to ask a question of the abbot. Sure. Um, Sir Abbot, if that is how you like to be addressed, or is it just abbot? You can call me the abbot. It's fine. Okay, well, um... He likes abbot. it when people say, Hey, abbot! <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> um, so, Vasilka? Mm-hmm. Is... How do I phrase this? Is the form that she currently inhabits a new form to her? Has she you received? You could say that she's healing? only a few months old. But she's a full-grown woman. She is, isn't she? Beautiful. Look at that red hair, so striking. She is very beautiful. Um, did she? Did she look different? before or was she just brought into the earth in this or earth air quotes Barovia in this incarnation well this is the first time she's been as she is but I've only picked the very finest parts to assemble her I think she looks perfect she will be perfect soon 
come closer. And Vasilka walks up. And as she, this time she approaches you and you get this whiff of rot. And as she approaches, you can see that she is many body parts sewn together. Though heavily made up to hide this, she is assembled from the parts of dozens of women. Alamis is pretty much done. And she steps backwards then again. Won't she be a beautiful bride? Oh. Eris nods. You're sick. Bride for who? I was going to ask the same question. <laughs> you don't really understand, do you? You're not from here, are you? No, but we're trying to put the pieces together, so out with it. You're trying to put the pieces together. You're trying to leave, aren't you? Like every other soul in this place, I hear them screaming constantly. I'm trying to allow them out. You see, the master of this land seeks his bride with the flaming red hair. Surely you know she keeps returning. I've heard she's back again, though I have not laid eyes on her myself. Why would anyone submit an actual soul to such horrors as to be a bride of the Lord. But, Vasilka, we can make her to be the bride. And surely, once Strahd falls in love with her, he will release us from this land. Okay. <laughs> well, this has been very nice. Thank you very much for the wine. It was nice to meet Vasilka and nice to meet you, Abbot. I, I hear the Burgomaster's son is dead. He's a good man, isn't he? The Burgomaster, Kreskov. I knew his father and his grandfather and his great-grandfather in his time. They've all been very kind to this town. What creature are you? Celestial, of Celestial. some sort. <laughs> What time? I am just me. The Burgomaster's son is dead, and he is grieved that his line ends. That is true. I think that should change. I think... I think the Lord of Light wills it. You would restore the line of the Burgomaster. The Morning Lord would. Through what means? Resurrection's not cheap or easy. By his own hand. Come. You can restore that which has died. You claim to have that power. Just watch. And he stands up and walks and wa begins to walk out the door. He parts the double doors leading into this um, little chapel area with the table and looks back at you all. Aren't you all Following. coming? Wait, could you just give us one moment? Just a moment. No, no, no. Bring, okay. bring a you... shovel. I'm told he's already buried. No. Okay, all no, right. No. And he turns around and walks. So, okay, I just imagine if, if he is a celestial and he's been here for however many years, he's listening to all of these mind. souls trying, he's, he's crazy. He's lost his mind. He's could lost his ever loving, quiet. angelic mind. Could you Arithin. not be so loud? He's going to hear you say that. <laughs> Gonna and whatever, like a man possessed, because this is something that he's very interested. In. Yeah, whatever the case may be, you'll have to find out next time.